It's a meeting of the city council will come to order. The clerk will call the roll. Councilor Adrian. Here. Councilor Capone. Here. Councilor DePiro. Here. Councilor Hanlon. Here. Councilor Lee. Here. Councilor Marchese. Here. Councilor Martins. Here. Councilor Matuski. Here. Councilor McLaughlin. Here. Councilor Napolitano. Here. And President DeFlorio. Here. Eleven members present. We do have a quorum. We do have a quorum. If the uh, audience could please stand and join us in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. If we could please all uh, remain standing for a moment of silence. Um, the former Ward 5 Council, Laurie Bruno, has passed away. And um, could you please have a moment of silence? Madam President, Sir. if we could also add uh, Joseph Prezioso, lifelong Everett resident, uh, Navy veteran, longtime employee of Massport. Also, Joseph Prezioso. Please Madam President, move to accept the previous minutes meetings. I have a motion to accept, accept the previous uh, meetings. All in favor? All, right. All opposed? The ayes have it. Um, we do have a public hearing to begin the evening. Um, item number one is a public hearing offered by President uh, Councilor Rosa DeFlorio that the National Grid be allowed to do work at 97 Ferry Street, including laying electric PVC conduit underground and doing all necessary sidewalk restoration. Council Capone. Thank you, Madam President. Is the petitioner here? If we could please have the petitioner before us to give us an overview. Do I have a second? Second. 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 All in favor? All right. The petitioner, please come, uh, have a seat, what? and state your name for the record. Okay. Uh, the mic has to turn green. Thank here you. Good evening, Council. My name is Michael Cordiva, National Grid Electric, 170 Medford Street, Malden. Uh, we, we're petitioning to put this one four-inch conduit through the back of the sidewalk to the pad mount at 97. This is so that we can get power over to number 124 Ferry Street, which we haven't been able to do because this conduit hasn't, hadn't been in place. Thank you. Any questions, Council Capone? Thank you, Madam President. To, uh, through you to our guests. Good evening. So is all of the work, is it limited to sidewalk work or is there anything straight? No, just sidewalk. It's all sidewalk. What kind of time frame do you think you're looking at to get it done? Usually the contractor could probably have it in in a day, day or two. That's with curing this concrete sidewalk with, you know, full replacement restoration. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, Council Matuski. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, what is that 124 Ferry Street? That's a new... Um, Multi-unit dwelling. They've been building it for about a year and a half, two years. How many units is there, do you know? Off the top of my head, I'd say I think they're around 16 units. Is that the one uh, just before the intersection with Nichols? Nichols, I think Nichols comes in to Ferry Street, and right. then diagonally across would be 124. That's the one that's been abandoned for quite some time? And there? renovated, yeah. yeah. Well, your company did some work on the sidewalk last year. We gave you a permit to dig. Do you recall that? Yes, I remember that one. That was to um, get the power from the manhole up the sidewalk, then in back. We had to install a transformer for them. But the deal was you were supposed to fix the sidewalk and put it in the condition it was. That's it's not like thing. that today, sir. That's the contract. The customer usually digs No, we there. gave you the permit. Massillon. I have a good memory up here. Okay. Would you fix that, please? Let's be nice here. Don't con me tonight. Thank you. Yes, sir. 124 Ferry. Any further questions? If not, oh, no. Well, did you have a, a question, yes. Councillor Martins? <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. Do we know what time of the day this work is going to be taking place? I can find out for you. But usually these crews work daytime unless you have a requirement for night work. Thank you. If there's no further questions, excuse us the customary thanks. Thank you. Open we need to public hold the hearing. Public so the motion is to open public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Right. All opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, anybody in the public uh, want to speak? 
If not, I'm going to do the three times. Yeah, three times in favor. Okay. So I'll say three times uh, in favor. Anybody in favor of this petition? Anybody in favor of this petition? Anybody in favor of this petition? That part is closed. Now, anybody opposed to this petition? Is anybody opposed to this petition? Is anybody opposed to this petition? Hearing none. Close public hearing. I have a motion to close public participation. I do have a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? You guys have it. The matter's in front of you. Table action. Second. Second. Table action on the, on the motion. Council Matuski. Uh, just on the motion, uh, this gentleman uh, seems sincere that he would repair that sidewalk. Uh, I have a good memory of what we're, what we're approving up here. <coughs> and uh, there's a dip in the sidewalk now. It's been like that since we gave the permit. So he's assured us that he's going to fix it when the weather conditions improve, I hope. So I'll vote favorably on this. But I'm going to keep an eye on that sidewalk, though, okay? Because okay. I'm not going to approve this, uh, uh, things that uh, aren't uh, fixed properly. Thank you. Thank you. So I have fable action. I do have a second. Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Adrian. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. <coughs> yes. Councilor Politano. Yes. And President DeFlorio. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays. You've passed the order. 11 yeas, 0 nays. You've passed the order. I have a motion to open public participation. I do have a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Do there we have a sign-in sheet? There's if not, anybody in the public would like to make any comments? If not... I have a motion to close public participation. I do have a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? You have closed public participation. We have a sign-in sheet. We do. If we could please uh, have the clerk let us know what's on that agenda. On the sign-in sheet. Yep. We have um, Mr. Demas is here for both items number 8 and uh, item 26. I'll take a motion to take off. Probably want to take 26. 8 and 26. So the motion is to take 8 and 26. Should we do one at a time? Uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do one at a time, yes. but the motion is to take eight, items 8 and 26 off the agenda. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Clerk will read item number 8. Item number 8 is a presentation offered by President Rosa de Florio. A request from His Honor the Mayor that Powers and Sullivan <coughs> LLC, who are the external auditors for the city, make a brief presentation about the city's most recent audit. Do I have a motion to invite? <laughs> so moved. Second. Uh, could you, gentlemen, could you please state your name for the record? Eric Demas, CFO. Andre Stahada. Frank Soretti, partner with Powers and Sullivan. Any questions? If not, we're going to do a presentation. Is that? Yeah, Mr. Demas will. Uh, okay, Mr. Demas. So our uh, external auditors are here to make a presentation <coughs> on the results of this year's audit. Um, this isn't something that typically happens here in the city. It does with some communities, not with others, as I'm speaking from my former life. Um, but the mayor's thought was, given the number of new members on the board, thought it was a good opportunity um, to have the independent auditors come in and make a presentation. Okay. And to that, I will turn it over to um, if, Mr. What, one quick question. You, Council Capone. If I may, I know it said brief. What's brief? <laughs> What's How long brief? of a presentation are we talking about? Uh, how long do you want it? Like 20 well, minutes? Well, you make it nice and concise. You hit the high points because uh, yep. there is a lot of uh, agenda, but I'll leave that up to my colleagues. So We, we do have a very heavy agenda tonight. We're certainly okay. not trying to be rude. I'm sorry. But, no, that's uh, quite all right. I if understand. If we could get the point across, whatever, yep. uh, as quickly as possible, we would appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Well, thank you for having us here tonight. We appreciate the opportunity to pre present the results of the fiscal 2019 audit. In front of you, you have three reports. One of them is a comprehensive annual financial report. That's the big report. And uh, the requirements for the city uh, under government accounting standards are to prepare a set of basic financial statements, which is a smaller report. It's not as comprehensive as this report. Um, but the city has elected to, to prepare a comprehensive <coughs> annual financial report. And the main reason for that is to submit it to the, um, there's a, a program, an award program, uh, called the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting, and that program is run by the Government Finance Officers Association. The city also participates in their budget program as well. Uh, they've been in this, um, we call it the CAFR 
program, CAPA is short for a comprehensive annual financial report. The city has been in this program since 2015 and has received the award each year that it's participated. It's also submitting its 2000 financial statements uh, to the program as well. And we anticipate that they're going to receive the, uh, the certificate of achievement again for 2019. And the idea of this program is that this <coughs> report, uh, like the name says, is a more comprehensive report uh, than the basic financial statements. It includes a transmittal letter up front that you wouldn't normally have, and that gives uh, management the ability to talk about the profile of the city, factors affecting economic condition, financial policies and procedures and forecasting. It has like a list of principal officials, an organization chart, things to make the financial statements more usable to the users of the financial statements. There's also uh, things in there to make it more transparent. There's something called combining statements, which are in the back, which provide more detail than you would otherwise see in a set of basic financial statements. Uh, and then there's uh, the statistical section, which is really, there's a lot of, um, there's 10 year schedules in there of financial information that help you to uh, look at trends and see how the city has done over a 10 year period. There's other information about the, uh, the tax base, uh, the tax rates, uh, collections. Uh, there's information in there about uh, debt ratios and uh, principal taxpayers, and there's information about uh, operating uh, statistics. <coughs> and so it's a very comprehensive report. There's a lot of information in there, but it's an elective program. Um, and we, as a firm, feel very strongly that it's a worthwhile program. We do believe that the financial statements are more transparent, more usable, and you know we give a lot of credit to the to the mayor, to the city council, to the CFO for supporting and participating in this program because we do feel strongly that it's a it's a lot better product. So I just wanted to you know, take a little bit of time to talk about that. Uh, there's only uh, 45 communities that in Massachusetts that participated in the program in 2017. So the city was one out of 45. We audit 24 of them, so we're involved with 24 of them. And uh, you know, we're very proud of that as a firm. And we think you should be too. Um, some financial highlights, the city maintained its AA plus credit rating. Uh, that rating was achieved in 2017 when you were at a AA. Uh, you, were, you were bumped up to the AA plus. Your free cash for 2019 was $14.3 million. That was a $4.3 million increase over the prior year that was mainly due to unexpended school appropriations. And since 2015, your uh, free cash has increased by $9.1 million. So it's been a steady increase over that period of time, and that's a positive trend. But we always look at trends, and uh, the health and the, um, of the financial position is moving in a positive direction. The general fund fund balance totaled $36 million. Of that, $1.3 million was committed. Uh, for continuing appropriations approved by council orders. Another 8.4 million was assigned for encumbrances. That left you with 26.3 million of unassigned fund balance. That's 12.5% of your budget. The rating agencies like to see at least 10%. Um, and so you're, you're over that 10% threshold. But for AAA communities, they like to see higher numbers. And sometimes your higher reserves will help to mitigate some scores that might not be as high in some other areas. And so that, I think, is something that you know the city is working towards, is to build up uh, those reserves and hopefully be able to get that AAA uh, rating at some point. Uh, your general stabilization fund totaled $3.7 million. That was a $1.2 million increase over the prior year. Your capital improvement stabilization fund totaled $3.4 million, and that was about an $850,000 increase over the prior year. So again, there's more good trends there. With reserves, those uh, funds are like reserves, monies that you're setting aside, and you're you're building those up, which is great for your financial position. Um, collections of real estate and personal property taxes continue to be very strong at 98%. That's a very good uh, collection rate. General fund budgetary results: your uh, operations resulted in a 5.6 million dollar surplus. Your actual revenues exceeded your budget by 6.7 million dollars. The largest uh, surpluses related to that were intergovernmental revenue, which was $1.9 million, and that was mainly related to school state aid. And then your departmental and other was also $2.4 million over budget, and that was mainly related to your host agreement with the casino. Uh, your expenditures were $5 million <coughs> under budget, and the majority of that was from um, the school turning back funds, $3.2 million. 
We had a couple of legal deficits for snow and ice and state and county charges. Those are going to be funded by the 2020 tax rate. And then those increases were all offset by um, the use of $7.9 million of free cash. You used $4 million of free cash to reduce your tax rate. You used another $912,000 to fund appropriations. And then you also set money aside in your general stabilization and OPEB trust fund. Each of those got $899,000 and you put another $1.2 million into your uh, CIP stabilization fund. So again, that's you know great that you're setting money aside and building up those reserves. Uh, your water and sewer operating budget, or operations, um, we look at these on a budgetary basis, which is how you maintain your books and records. Your fund balance totaled $4.7 million. That was about a $401,000 increase from the prior year. And that's mainly due to better than anticipated uh, user charges coming in. Uh, water and sewer operations are fully funded by the rates. They don't rely on any kind of general fund subsidy. And there's no uh, issues or anything like that that we can see that seems to be, you know, water rates and everything else seem to be fine the way they are. Um, next thing was the uh, net pension liability. Your net pension liability was $106.3 million. It was a $10.3 million increase from the prior year. Um, that increase is mainly just attributable to service cost and interest. And it was also a net loss on investments, which is what other uh, communities and retirement systems that are in PRIP uh, saw for the year ended 12-31-18. Um, your 58% funded, that was a 2% decrease uh, from the prior year. And um, you're currently scheduled to be funded by 2029. And my understanding is that once the pension system is fully funded, that that the money that's being used for the pension system is then going to be redirected to start funding the OPEB liability. Even though you're already funding the OPEB liability, you'll then have a much more significant contribution going against that liability. The OPEB, uh, you contributed $899,000 to the OPEB trust, as I previously mentioned. Uh, the, the balance in the fund totaled $6 million at the end of the year, so you are <coughs> trying to accumulate a fairly significant balance in there, and that helps with your discount rate. Um, your net OPEB liability was $271,000. That was an increase of $16 million, and again, mainly due to uh, current service cost and interest. And the OPEB fund, the net OPEB liability is about 2.2% funded, so there's still you know, quite a ways to go on that one, but there's no legal requirement to fund it, and a lot of communities in Massachusetts are taking the same approach that Everett is taking, pay off the the net pension liability first, which is there's a legal requirement to fund that. And once that is funded, to then redirect those funds towards the OPEB liability. So the, that's not unusual. Um, and there's you know, many other communities in Massachusetts that are in the same situation with their OPEB liability. Um, your debt is about 6.2% uh, of your total appropriations, just as a rule of thumb. 5% is usually considered to be a, a good debt ratio. Uh, on average, over the last five years, you're at about 5.3%. So you're, you're at a good, healthy debt ratio. But my understanding is that the city has a really aggressive debt schedule and uh, is expecting to pay down 70 to 80% of that debt in the next 10 years. And um, I believe that the rating agencies also look very favorably upon <coughs> that. So those are the financial highlights. Audit results, we were able to issue an unmodified opinion on the financial statements. That's the best you can get means the financial statements are fairly stated in accordance with uh, generally accepted accounting principles. All the reporting deadlines were met. The information that we received was accurate. We received timely responses to our audit inquiries, and there were no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses noted during the course of the audit. If any of those did come up, they would have been brought to your attention before this meeting, um, but that's important to note. Um, the report on federal awards, I can spend about two minutes just give you a real quick summary on that one. Um, you spent $12 million of federal funds during the year. You're required to have a separate audit. They call it a single audit if you expend over $750,000 in a year, so you qualified <coughs> for that. You spent about $5.2 million on school lunch, $5.1 on education grants, and then you spent about $600,000 on community development and five hundred dollars on homeland security. Uh, there were no findings in this. No, it was an unmodified opinion, no question cost, so this was another clean report. It's, best results you can hope for on, the, on that single audit piece. And then the management letter, uh, real quick, uh, there were two new comments. 
actually before I get into those, I just wanted to say the management letter is critical in nature. It doesn't highlight the things that you do well. Uh, but what's really important to know about it is that there's no material weaknesses or no significant deficiencies. But we do feel that there's value to providing comments that might help you to enhance operations, and that's the types of comments that we have here. There's nothing here for you to be concerned about that is an issue that we would consider to be an issue or something. Um, but there were two new comments. One relates to um, uncashed checks and just how you uh, resolve those and uh, get those off the books. And the other one relates to old outstanding checks and moving them, those off of outstanding checklists into the tailings account. And then there were four prior year comments of which two are fully resolved and two are still, still in process. Uh, the two that are in process relate to police and fire details and uh, <coughs> writing off on collectible tax receivables. But those things I think are well on their way. And uh, like I said, there's nothing here that I think that you need to be concerned about in any way, shape or manner. Um, and so, I mean, overall we found very strong internal controls in place. We always look very closely at cash and receivables. Those are two of the biggest risk areas for us always in an audit. Uh, we want to make sure that the cash is being reconciled on a monthly basis, that the reconciling items are, are accurate and uh, complete. And that's what we found. Um, there's good timely reconciliations going on for cash and receivables. No issues. We also uh, test transactions uh, in the uh, revenue payroll and payable cycles. And we found that everything was being processed in accordance with uh, city internal controls and uh, policies and procedures and also in accordance with federal and state requirements. So I mean, that's about as quick as I can summarize everything for you. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Council Capone. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, through to our guests. Thank you very much. That was very <coughs> thorough and very brief. So you did a great job with that. Two things uh, quickly. The uh, continuing recommendation about the write-offs. Uh, what kind of percentage change has there been at all from the prior year? Uh, there was, a, I think, a small amount taken off. I think that it's something that's still being looked at, trying to determine the collectability. But there are um, some old receivables that go back. Um, we're talking about motor vehicle and personal property, right, yeah. to 2001. Mm -hmm. um, it, there's not really a risk that you won't collect them just because you're taking them off the books. There's still mechanisms out there uh, to help collect those, especially for the motor vehicle when they get flagged at the registry. So. Um, it just helps to streamline the reconciliation process and the, the accounting. Um, but, you know, you can still collect those funds even though the receivables aren't residing on the city. So books. by carrying it, it's just extra paper you have to get through and it's, you know, Correct. obviously we can still go after whatever funds are available. Absolutely. Right. And then um, the outstanding uh, checks, the, the new issue that you had there. Yeah. Uh, so if you could explain that a little bit more in detail. <coughs> We have checks that have passed due 60 days, 90 days. Where, where are we at? Um, yeah, there's some checks on, on there that date back to like 2006. There's not a lot of them, but it's just something that makes sense to clean up. Um, and so really it would be good to establish a policy where you kind of put some milestones in and say, okay, after three months we're going to make sure that we contact the payee of the check and try to find out why they haven't cashed the check. After six months, we're going to move the check off the outstanding checklist and put it into the tailings account because that's a safer place to keep it. And that's like another liability account. Um, and then beyond that, um, you know, once you get uh, it's in the tailings account, then there's a, a process that you can go through. You have to advertise, go through a certain advertising process. And then if nobody claims the check, after a period of time, you can actually take it in as miscellaneous revenue. So that's kind of the the flow of it, it's, you start with the outstanding check, move it to tailings, and then eventually you can take it in as miscellaneous right. revenue. And it gets forfeited. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I have no other questions. I appreciate your time. Councilor Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, gentlemen, thank you for the reports. But I, I, I'm sure I don't need to point out that these are three booklets that we just received this evening. And I like to read these things, and I'm only up to page five so far. So, uh, but I will have uh, probably a lot of questions that we'll come go through with our auditor, and uh, then he will get them back over to you and everything. So, I don't want you to think that when you leave here, you're leaving and you're all done. You know? okay. I'm sure that we have, we'll have and, and others will have some, some questions beyond that, you know. Yep. So, I want to thank you very much. Uh, the reports look good anyway, you know, yeah, but uh, we'll be getting back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor McKaysey. 
I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's Mr. Davis could answer this. Uh, just on page 58, just uh, just a couple of small things. Uh, well, a big book, yep. It says elementary school feasibility study was $1.15 million. Is that correct? It's right there. There's on the, you know, the shoot library construction, water main replacements. That's the authorized and issued debt? Yes. Do we spend that or are we obligated uh, to that? No, that's just under your authorized and unissued. So yep. there's a number of, it, it, once city council authorizes a bond order, yep. and we don't actually at that point issue the debt, um, we just have to classify it as authorized and unissued. So it goes towards um, our debt limit restrictions. All right. And what would that be for? Something that vast for a million dollars? Uh, well, there was an original appropriation, I believe, three years ago on um, building a new elementary school. So the total authorization was nope. 1.5 as required by statute. That was the total estimated cost. Um, however, we received significant reimbursement from the MSBA. So even though City Council authorizes the 1.5 as required, we don't actually bond what we're not going to spend. Um, because as the MSBA projects pr progress, we submit invoices to them and then, then they send us the reimbursements. But the statute requires us to actually get the authorization. Do we ever get an estimate of what an elementary school would cost? It depended on the site location and that's one of the reasons why um, that project was withdrawn. Yep. Um, because depending on where the location was, it drastically altered the estimated cost of the project. I mean, what are we looking at, 30 million, 40 million? Or would it be at that high, 60 million? You'd be closer to 80 to 100 million. 80 to 100? In a right. high school, you'd be looking at over 200 million yep. in today's costs. And one, just one more question I have here. Oh, sugar. oh yeah, this one here, um, I think it's um, taxes and, let me see. For the fiscal year ending 2019, the city exempted property taxes totaling 38 million under the tax increment, uh, the TIF agreements. Was was uh, that was page 74? 74. The most significant, before I even get there, the most significant TIF agreement that the city has is with Exelon. Is Exelon okay? Um, I believe there's one or two other very small TIF agreements, but certainly not um, to that so, duration. So that's what. We're losing there, that TIF right there, $38 million a year? At the time of the disclosure, yep. yes. Right. Based upon the reports that Exelon files with the EACC. Um, to date, um, I'm not saying that the property um, or the power plant is at a current value of 1.6. That's why we've hired independent appraisers specializing in energy um, producing properties. But the, the total investment per Exelon since the inception of the TIF is $1.6 billion. They're required to update that with the ACC every year. Right. Thank you very much. Council McLaughlin. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, through you to Mr. Demas. Mr. Demas, I want to thank you for uh, having this presentation put forward. Unfortunately, like Councilor Hamlin said, we just received all of this, these books this evening and all of this information. A lot of very important information that I really am looking forward to dissecting and reading thoroughly. If we have additional questions, I know we can always ask you, but would we be able to ask our outside auditors or how can a uh, line of communication open so that any member of the City Council can ask them on any aspect of these three books? What's the best way to proceed for? Uh, certainly, and, and I do want to apologize that you just received these today. Um, I had these and was going to be putting them in your uh, mailboxes on Thursday, but I literally left here and went straight to the hospital for an unexpected emergency. Um, you can always ask me anything that you would like, um, but Powers and Sullivan is the external auditors for the city. Um, I can certainly provide you with their contact information. And <coughs> feel free to contact them directly as well. But you basically know everything in these books anyhow, correct? So if we're asking and talking to you, it's like talking to the ex external auditors, correct? I mean, you're very fluent in all of this. I, uh, I believe I do, but feel free to ask the independent. Sure. I mean, uh, 
what is your opinion if we're talking to Mr. Dean as we're talking to you guys? I just because I think that we're going to have a lot of questions. I know I'm going to have a lot of questions once I read through these. Documents. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to like arrange like a time, I could come back out and okay. meet with you if you have that many questions. Maybe that would make sense if you could send me the questions in advance. That sure. would uh, probably help to facilitate things, and then you know, if it makes sense to have a meeting, I'd be happy to come out or. Okay. Uh, rather than get you know questions from each one of you and get bombarded with emails, it might be good to, if you could put together like one list, send it to we me. We could always do a committee as a whole. That's what I'm council thinking, council president. And, uh, I'm thinking that we should, we should, we should, we should have sent this to the committee of the whole. And I don't think it weighs the means committee because it's only going to be four members that are going to discuss uh, something that might we might all have a or multiple questions on. So, fair enough, Council Marquez. That, that's a fair enough statement. Uh, one question that I do have that if you can answer. Aaron, Snow Ops software for forty thousand dollars on page fifty-eight. What is Snow Ops operate, uh, software? So the Snow Ops software that was uh, part of a CIP. I believe it goes back to two thousand and seventeen. It was a CIP um, authorization that we were going to be bonding that project. However, after the authorization happened, there became um, a grant became available um, with the state. So we actually, prior to actually issuing any debt, we wanted to see if we could get the state to pay for it. Um, so we submitted that grant and the state actually paid for it. So yeah. it's one of those things, typically you're authorized and unissued. Once every four to five years, what we'll do is um, I'll come before council and say, okay, these projects we know for certain are 100% complete. There's no more remaining liabilities. And then I'll ask you to rescind those authorizations. This is one of them. Um, so, so we will rescind that at some point? You'll end up rescinding that because point. we ended up getting, uh, we did purchase that software, it was implemented, um, and is still being used by DPW, but we got the state to pay for it rather than having to fund it through debt. So, and I don't know if this is the most appropriate time to ask this question, but what is the software purpose for? Because I have a piece that I'm going to put on in two weeks, but I'm just wondering if you could tell me, and we don't have to tell you know. Very briefly, it's software that has every single um, road and plow route in the city. Okay. Um, there's a combination of the city plows as well as independent contractors. So what this allows us to do is we know exactly where um, city plows are, sanders and what have you, as well as independent contractors. Um, one of the issues that we had in previous years in the software addressed is that let's say there was damage done to a vehicle. Without this tracking software, it was difficult to say whether it was a city vehicle, which independent contractor it was. So this allows us better monitoring um, of who is doing what during snowstorms. No, and that's great, and that's kind of sort of where I was going with my next piece, and that is a, a, a GPS tracking device system also that community Jews like Boston that some of us are, are familiarized with, um, and that is more modern of vehicles and routes and so forth. So and I was just that's kind of why I asked that question, because I don't want to put a duplicate piece on the calendar. So we'll talk about that further, but that's when I noticed that I wanted to ask that question. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Aye. Uh, I think motion to spend the rules take item thirty six off the uh, calendar. Oh no, we hold it. Is Mr. Demas here for something else? Mr. Demas is here Spend the rules take item twenty six. And since uh, I have a new piece on, it's number 38. Can we suspend the rules and take that one with it? Aye. Item 26. It is a transfer offered by Council President Rosa DeFlorio that the Everett City Council hereby approves the transfer of $141,075.69 from the Hancock Fire, St Fire FY15 CIP to the Central Fire FY19 CIP for additional construction costs. And 38, yes. sorry, uh, Councilor Capone. There's a resolution off by Councilor Fred Capone that the Mayor's Office and Community Development update the Council as to the Central Fire Station project, including the progress made, the remaining work to be completed, and the time frame for completion. We're taking those collectively. Please, so moved. So I have a motion to invite the chief. I do have a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, <coughs> Council McLaughlin. 
Well, the number 38 belongs to Councillor Capone. So <laughs> are you speaking on item 26? I am happy to yield the floor to my colleague. <laughs> okay, thank you. Councillor Capone. Thank I don't you, want Madam to cause President. Any, uh, friction. No, thank you, Madam President. I appreciate uh, my colleague uh, yielding the floor. It just happens to be that it is a timely request at the same time that uh, there was the, uh, the request to transfer the funds. And you know, I live across the way from Central Fire, so I've noticed that that project has been going on for quite some time. I don't know if you're prepared to discuss that this evening. You may not be. Um, I didn't expect to get answers this evening, but whereas it kind of lines up with the request for the, the additional or the transfer of the funding, you probably do have many of those answers. So I will leave that to your discretion as if you, how much of that you can get into. Uh, if you need more time, we can always get back to that at the next meeting. But I'm just wondering uh, with regards to the project down there, how far are we? How much more do we have to do? Where are we at financially? How much more money's on that? And are we dealing with the same contractors or is there something different going on? So all of that kind of in a ball of wax. So whoever wants to go after that. Thank you, Chief Anthony Carley. Thank you, Councilor. Sure. Um, actually, I can answer some of those questions tonight, and maybe okay. by next meeting I could do a presentation of where we're at as far okay. as, um, you know, maybe bring up some pitches and things like that and talk about the scope of work we've done down there. Uh, I'm hearing right now from the contractors that they should be complete, substantial completion date of uh, mid-April. We do a Tuesday meeting um, every Tuesday morning at 11 with them, so if there's any updates tomorrow, I can add that into my presentation next okay. month. Um, it is the same contractor that okay. did win the, the contract. They have switched out with some subcontracting work. <coughs> um, as you can see, the front is still covered up. We're just waiting for the limestone to be delivered and installed on the front side of it. But there are a lot of things that have to be sewn up inside as well. So okay. I would say um, mid-April is um, a good estimate. Um, but it was also supposed to be done in October. So. Right. Uh, as part of that, with any contract with the city, uh, we can institute liquidated damages, which uh, the CFO can speak to tonight with the balance that we have here at Hancock, <clears throat> because that was a, a result of liquidated damages, which is essentially a penalty for people that don't finish in time. So uh, we anticipate that that'll probably be the case with this as well, because they made some promises that they didn't come through on. But uh, overall, the envelope of the building is complete. The roof was done um, last summer. Uh, the end of uh, or the beginning of last summer, the windows are in, new heating systems in. Um, utilities, National Grid, I believe, is running some utility work in the power lines in the next couple weeks. So, uh, like I said, the envelope is pretty much complete. It's the inside that we're still waiting on. Okay. And what subcontracting work was changed out? I believe they switched out with their original steel contractor that they brought into the job. I believe there was a dispute between the contractor and their subcontractor, and they had switched out there. Okay. I'm not sure if that resulted in any lag of work in the front. Uh, from what I saw, it was just a couple of days from one contractor leaving and another one coming in. For the most part, this contractor has used um, his own um, personnel to do the painting and the, um, you know, the, the laborious work that, that's been going on there. It's been the same electrician. It's been the same utilities um, contractor since the beginning of the job. Okay, good. All right, and uh, if I could, uh, Mr. Demas, where are we at financially? What was the original contract price for this project? Where are we at? Where do we expect to be? Uh, so the original authorization was $2 million. Um, we've had uh, a few change orders. We went out to bid, um, and the contract came in. I don't have the exact figures, but the contract came in under the $2 million. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know and are aware, when you get into some of these older buildings, situations arise, um, which is why we're here before you tonight requesting this to be brought over. As of right now, um, we are at, as far as I'm concerned, before I sign any additional contracts or change orders, we're technically at the $2 million, which is why I'm requesting this transfer tonight. Um, although that being said, there's, we're probably going to be getting liquidated damages, but I'm not going to sign any executed um, change orders until I know that appropriate funding's in place, um, because I don't know when the contractor's gonna finish and what the level of liquidated damages are. Um, the money that's being transferred, um, requesting from Hancock over to Central, 
is a result, as the chief indicated, where liquidated, dam liquidated damages that we impose on the contractor over at Hancock. So we do monitor these contracts. We do hold the um, contractors responsible. And as such, um, that's why we had this available funds to be put over to Central. Um, the reason why this is happening now is because we issued the bonds on an actual building that had an estimated useful life of over 30 years, um, we were going to wait to go to council to ask for those um, un unexpended um, portion to be transferred to the next building. We didn't actually anticipate it at Central, but again, as the chief indicated, we've run into some issues at Central. That's an older building. Um, and prior to, again, me authorizing any change orders, I want to make sure um, that the funding is in place. I don't want to rely on potential legal avenues down the road. Okay. And you stated that we're at two now, so uh, the additional expenses that, that we're talking about, that's the result of change orders or is that or, or unanticipated situation? Unanticipated situations that they're okay. finding in the building. Okay. And um, the original deadline was October, was it? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, um, and this is this a different contractor than uh, than Hancock? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, but they understand the situation at sure. Hancock, which is, I think, one of the reasons why they subbed out one of their subcontractors because they know that the city's going to hold okay. them liable. Okay. So they saw what was happening. They saw the writing on the they wall. They knew they're there. Now, now, do they, and this might be a little bit beyond this, but do they acknowledge that there's going to be an issue? So, part of the contracting process counselor is that when we feel that there's going to be a situation like this our um, owner's project manager will issue a letter saying hey you were supposed to be done on this date yep. um, just so you know we have an exercised right exercised right of liquidated damages it, it ultimately puts them on notice okay. we don't they? start that procedure until if they have issued that letter okay but we don't start the procedure with that because we don't want to muddy the waters as far as completion and things sure. like that. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, now, what happens to these funds if they don't get transferred over there? What would happen to the liquidated damage <laughs> that came in on, on Hancock Street? So the unexpended portion at, on Hancock? Yeah. We would just wait until we found another um, municipal building um, to make a capital investment as. Okay. Because those can't actually go back and lapse into free cash because they were debt issued on the open market. So those funds actually have to be used for something um, similar. We okay. couldn't use those funds for, let's say, purchasing um, um, a fire truck because it wasn't a municipal building. It has different estimated useful lives. Um, this is why I work with bond council to make sure that the language was appropriate. And they sign off saying, you know, the conditions that the original bond was issued on are met underneath um, the new appropriation. Okay. And, and this will be the final question on this uh, for you in terms of the finances. Uh, we're at the two, and, you know, we, we did encumber some issues. What are we anticipating that it's going to run us in order to complete the project in April? So we actually have part of the meeting tomorrow or sometime this week we have a meeting with the owner's project manager to look at outstanding chain change orders so we'll be able to you know when i come back down i'll be able to okay provide right. you with a, a accurate figure of that. okay I, I appreciate that so um yeah i just I hesitate to commit more money to somewhere if we know that we're going to be getting it back because sometimes you get it back when you put it out there it takes a lot of effort to get it back i have every confidence in our legal team to be able to do that but um uh with that said, I'll, I'll accept those answers at this point in time. And, Chief, if, if you're able to put together a packet Absolutely. after you have that meeting, just so we have a better fill where we're at. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Okay. Thank you. I have no other questions. Uh, Council McLaughlin. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, through you to either the Chief or Mr. Carley. Do we have any city co city employees work in in the fire station? Any of our own men um, working in-house? Uh, yes. We had... Um, at different occasions, not continuously. We had the uh, wire department help out with some um, wiring issues, putting some outlets in that were not in the scope of work originally. Um, they put some recessed lighting into the uh, day room area. Um, I'm not sure of any other specific um, tradesmen on the, on the city other than the wire department. So we don't believe it, or we don't know, Chief, that there's any other No, I can't. The, nothing's coming to mind other than the wire department. They've worked pretty good with us. Uh, other than um, 
the day room ceiling was actually put in by the um, city services as well. So city services put in the day room <coughs> ceiling? Day, day room ceiling, yeah. Okay. So, and then, so my, my only question, I have a couple of quick questions, Chief. One is you said that all of the uh, general contractor has used their own, their own men to do the majority of this work. Yes. One being you highlighted the electrician has been consistently the yep. same electrician. So what, change, what needed us to have to have our electricians or our wire to pop in, if you will, um, go in and assist him or her? So it's my understanding that the scope of work in the original contract didn't... Um, highlight each one of the rooms, the, um, the bedrooms okay. for uh, the members had. Um, it was just instead of updating the wiring, it was just switching out an outlet and a switch. So what the city services, rather than do a change order, we had the city's electricians wire those outlets, wire those new lights in each one of those rooms. So we did it as a cost savings because with that way it was just time and materials rather than go with change order. And the general contractor was okay with our guys working on their project? Uh, yeah, because it, with them it was either a change order and we were going to pay them or it was our guys were doing it. And it, By all indications, they worked well together. I don't think either side held each other up. Okay. Um, their electricians were more on the main feed. I just don't want to see them try to stick stuff on us at the end if no, we have a problem of... Of, of faulty wiring, say, or some, some oh, yeah, sort no, of an issue where they're going to say, well, your guys did it. Well, no, your Oh, yeah, guys no, did and it, it. it's clearly defined what, believe me, like um, the electrical contractor, the main general contractor for that, it's clearly defined what our members have done and what they've okay. done. So, so it's and there's a clear scope of work. Because you yeah. guys can see how that can become a he Absolutely. said, she said type of back and back yeah. and Yeah, so it's very clear what the contractor owns and it's very clear what the, the city, city owns was responsible as far as that. For and all. all of our electricians are licensed and no no that. no question yeah. about their yeah. quality of work but yeah. honestly i don't want the general contractor because he's going to have the conditions against him yeah. i don't want him to come back and say well your guys yeah. did this and we well, have I can, to go forward and fix x y or z and yeah. that's why the equation should be lowered yeah so i don't want to get into one of those situations where yeah um, I can be honest be. with you, like when we did the liquidated damages meetings with the contractor at Hancock Street, it's always a case of that. We're going to come forward and say, hey, this is what you did, and they're going to come and say, well, we did this because of this. But at the end, it seems amicable. We, you know, we have faith in our owner's project manager. We have faith in our architects that have been monitoring this, and, and they provide their expertise. I'm not a contractor by trade like a lot of the firefighters are. So we're able to say, you know, we lean on them, and they say we should really be here at this point. Okay. So, no, that's fair yeah. enough. I just didn't want it to become a he says, she said, uh, back and forth yeah. at some point down the road where we yeah. did work on a general contractor's project. Yeah. And then my other last question is, the deputies' bathrooms, are they all being done over, or are there some bathrooms that are going to be safe for maybe a phase two to central fire station or some, some other later date, or are all the bathrooms being done? In the, so, in the ironically, the bathrooms, the two main bathrooms in the station, in the um, kitchen, were not done in this project. And the reason why was because, I want to say five, four or five years ago, city services actually put in a new commercial grade kitchen in the uh, two new bathrooms in there. Now, the deputies' bathroom that you're speaking to. Well, I didn't mean deputies specific. I just meant all the bathrooms in house. I yeah. So no. Not so really the deputy, deputies. Excuse me. So the. Um, the two bathrooms in the middle of the building are the general um, <coughs> members' building, and, and those aren't being touched because they were refinished. Uh, the deputies' bathroom, to my knowledge, it'll probably get a new fixture, maybe new sink and new toilet. But um, just to be clear, the scope of this, and I can, like I said, by next month I'll put together a program, some pictures. I did take Councilor Martins for a quick walkthrough, so she's got some knowledge of the building. Um, I can show you exactly what we do, uh, what we've done, but the scope of work wasn't like the scope of work at Hancock Street. Oh, and that's kind of what I'm getting, because yeah, Hancock so, came out beautiful. Yeah, and, and Hancock know. was completely gutted to the studs. We did some redesigning. We moved the day room to the back and those things. This was really to make sure the envelope of the building is protected with the roof and the windows. I uh, get a heating system in there that works properly. Each, each bedroom now has its own zone of heat. Uh, one side could be 90 degrees and the other one could be 30 at any given time. And that's not, um, that's not an exaggeration. Um, but we didn't gut walls. We didn't do that type of extensive, extensive work. Okay. Uh, we did a lot of asbestos remediation, okay. which is where a lot of these change orders and the cost started to grow. 
uh, because of a lot of the flooring tile came up when we started doing some work there. So we worked at making sure that there was no asbestos up on the living quarters, that type of stuff. Um, but as far as like specifically to gutting bathrooms and doing them over, like I said, the two main bathrooms weren't done over. The deputy's bathroom, which is off the deputy's room, that has a, a tub and a toilet, which will most likely have new fixtures put in. But to say it was gutted and, and to be refurbished, it was not. The two bathrooms that were not touched, will they be touched at a later date at a different phase? Not necessarily because they were done five years ago. Five years ago. And same thing with the kitchen. Other than a really good cleaning after this, and you know the whole building will be clean, but they, they were done, you know, satisfactorily by uh, city services. Great. And then my last question is on the appropriation tonight of one hundred forty-one thousand. Uh, what exactly is that covering for for change orders, or what what is that covering for additional work? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Do we know? What, no, at we, this point, I mean, it could be. Number from basically is what I'm asking. Oh, where, so the, where did we get 141 versus 200? That was the balance left over from the Hancock Street. That was the liquidated damages figure from the Hancock Street. So we came in under, I can't remember, was that a $3 million <coughs> job? 3.5. It was a $3.5 million job. So we came in at 3.36. Okay, so that's what was left over from Hancock that was the Street balance. Fire Station. It's renovation. the exact amount that was left over in that appropriation. Yeah. We're going to move it over here. I don't know exactly what we're actually going to need because, again, I don't know where we're going to end up with liquid, um, liquided damages. Um, however, we're at the point um, where we're near um, the total appropriation, and I'm refusing to sign any change orders until if that go over that appropriation until we actually have this additional appropriation. Now, hopefully, with um, the liquided damages, we won't need it, but. I'm not going to sign anything with the assumption, you know, we're going to be assessing damages to, to this uh, um, contractor. Um, I just can't do it. So I, I told the chief, I've been involved in the process. Um, I don't know where we're going to end up, but I'm going to follow the letter of the law. And if we don't have an appropriation, I'm not signing any more change orders. So, and, and again, I hate to leave it this. I apologize. So we're putting this additional 141000 towards the cost of Central Fire Station. We're allowing them to expand to the scope of work to this to this ceiling, basically. If they go a dollar over, are they going to be stopped from work, and they're going to not be able to continue to work until we... The, we the, uh, so I'm just wondering where it goes from here if this 141000 gets dried up very quickly in, you know, a couple of things that are unforeseen or something like that. If that happens, we would certainly come back. Um, I'm not anticipating that from talking with um, the chief um, and the OPM that's overseeing it. Um, we don't expect it to um, exceed that. Um, and at the end of the day, hopefully the taxpayers won't even have to fund this. And we, any unexpended funds, we become a council to reauthorize to another city building. Okay. But again, I don't know where the damages are going to come out. Okay. Um, and whereas we're coming up to that total amount of the appropriation through the original contract and change orders, I'm refusing to sign additional change orders. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Uh, Council Hanlon. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> the problem I have is that we've been talking so long, I think I got lost in the, in the shuffle over here with all the questions that were being asked and everything. But my question is that we're going to put $141,000 from Hancock into Central and that if there's anything left over that has to be done at, at Hancock, the, the, cop, the, the uh, contractors there are going to finish it? Is that what I got? No, Hancock is completed. Hancock is completed. It's completed. So Hancock there's nothing else that has to be done? No, sir. So it's ready to be open and grand party and everything? It's open. We I had the party a year and a half ago. Yeah, I've, I've saw that. I've been yeah. There, yeah. So, um, okay, so now all the work now that we're talking about is going down to um, Down to Central. Central. Okay, yes, and will this complete Central? Yes, this will this will help reach us towards that goal of <coughs> of completing central. Okay. okay, I think that answers what I want. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, uh, Council Matuski. Thank you, Madam President. Is there a clerk of the works for this project? We don't call it a clerk of the works. It's a, a project manager. Uh, so we actually do have a company that specializes in this, and they're acting. But nobody from Everett. I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, I've been. Uh, well, I was in the. Brickland Union. I worked on many schools and public projects, and there was somebody that represented the city on these particular jobs. It seems to me, uh, Chief, and no disrespect to you, because uh, you know you do the best you can with contractors, but this has been dragged out. Yes, sir. You know, you're you're blocking a street. Yep. 
that uh, people can't access. They've got to go through that little parking facility that the city yes. owns. And, you know, I know the building, was it 120 years old? About that now, yes, 1908. 1908. <clears throat> I got to tell you, I think the casino went up quicker than this, this I project. I sometimes feel that same way. When did this project start? It started um, with the roof project last uh, January. Uh, over a year. I mean, with all due respect, I know. We, let's pay attention here. That's no, a absolutely. lot of money. It is. You know, even the Hancock Street Station was a long time coming, too. It was. I mean, I don't know what takes so long here. I know you do run into problems, but, you know, the contractors have to figure this into it. Absolutely. You know, so it was supposed to be done in October, so now we're talking April. Two months. Now, what happens after April if it's not completed? Again, so what happens with our owner's project manager? They issue, um, the contract is re required to issue a, a date of substantial completion. So that's when the majority of it's done. They would go again back to the owner's project manager and say, this is why we can't do this and provide I, You that. know, I, I don't know if other cities experienced this. We had a park here mm -hmm. that took four years to do. Yeah. And now, you know, a small tot lot park. I, I, I think we really need a clerk of the works, you know, in, in this city yeah. to represent our interest, to make sure these contractors are on the ball. You know, I saw them taking the, I saw them taking the header out mm -hmm. Of the front, and it, 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 they look like they were inexperienced. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, and it, they took brick by brick out. And I, I was in the restoration field in the in the union, so I have a little bit of knowledge here. But this is over the top. Mm -hmm. Over 15 months there, 14 months. Come on. And then two years ago, there was something else. You know, and I have a lot of respect. The fire department, firemen, and, and and our public safety people should work in a, a good environment. And I knew it needed a lot of work. The clearance for a fire truck is like a half an inch. I know that was part of the that brow being raised up in the front. <laughs> and, you know, those drivers are amazing. If there was a, a rock in the street, you know, they yeah. lift the tire up. I watched the guy a couple of times, but this is over the top. I, and I'm going to mention to the mayor that from now on, these smaller pro I wouldn't call it small at this point, but we need a clerk of the work to represent the, the community. So everything is done right. You got a guy there every day to look at the progress being made. There was days there that nothing happened. I know that. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I live around the corner there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just not fair to the community. And uh, you know, I want to get back on track. I know you people are located in the basement here now of the fire department. Uh, fire prevention, yes, sir. Are you going to stay there? Uh, yes, that's the plan. Well, that's, a, that's probably a good idea. It's but, been uh, very convenient for the public, mostly. Yeah, so. I've gotten compliments on the, yeah. your, your fire alarm uh, outreach program that yeah. you do. But, uh, you know, honest, to be honest with you, I'm disappointed with whoever's in charge of this yeah. project. It's tough. Um, part of the state <coughs> statute is that um, over a certain amount that the city's required to have an owner's project manager. And you're right. On these... It's a large project to me. It's a huge undertaking for us and, and as the city, but it, as owners project managers, this isn't a huge thing. So when they do bid that, they don't always account for somebody to be there every day. Now, we saw the difference at Hancock Street. They did have an owners project manager every day there, and he was able to kind of move them on, check to, check to make sure people Well, we should have had one on this particular job. Absolutely. But I want to thank you for being here and explaining this. I'm going to vote for this expenditure. But this is the last of the money I'll spend. Now, we're going to go after these contractors for... And that's where the liquidated damages come in, I at, at the end of the project. That, that's one more. I'd like to know how much they... Because uh, I, I, when you're supposed to finish something, you're supposed to finish it. I mean, come on. It is. And a lot of times with this, Councillor, um, I think people feel that, hey, it's just taxpayers' money, or hey, it's just that. And I'm not speaking for the contractor, but a lot of times people go, well, it's a government contract. That's how many times everybody that I see asks me about the fire station. Oh, it's a government contract. We don't take it like that. We took it very seriously at the NCOC. We said, why put liquidated damages clause into the contract if we're not planning on going after them? And we did, and, and they understood that. So much so that we were so strict with them at Hancock that they chose not to bid on the central project. Well, this contractor, whoever it is, you know, I don't want to put the company name out there, but uh, I saw days where there was nobody there. I ride by there all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's just not, there was no movement. You got to have movement. You know, you had some warm weather. This has been a great winter to do this kind of work. Absolutely. 
But anyway, I want to thank you for appearing. I'm going to vote for this expenditure, but I got to tell you, I'm disappointed in the lengthy uh, process it's taken. I think the casino up went up quicker than this project here. Thank you, thank Councilor. you. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Council Martin. Did you have a uh, question? Yes. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. Um, so thank you again, Chief, for taking the time to take me on a tour yeah. of the station and to see the progression of the work. Um, so it was mentioned that asbestos was found. Are you able to tell us if we tested the entire station for asbestos? I can provide those. That I know that the um, the environmental impact of the, the station, there's a report on that, so I'll be able to provide that report. The majority of the um, asbestos that was removed or abated on the second floor were the old 8 by 8 red and black tiles um, in most of the rooms. When we teared up some old rugs, some old vinyl, um, those came up. So rather than, you know, mask over it, they just, they remediated those. So uh, I'm not sure. Now, the heating system has been replaced with a new um, state-of-the-art high-efficiency boilers. So I'm guessing that there was some remediation done down there because the boiler looked like it might have been at least from the 30s. So I'm guessing that it was probably there. Uh, we also had some, um, some old um, lockers removed down in the basement and that, so that very well could have contained that asbestos. But I can provide the environmental impact report as well. Thank you. And um, a follow-up question. Do we have any plans to test Ferry Station? Yeah, so one of the things we're talking about for Ferry Street, Ferry Street was, if you, most of you probably remember, it was renovated about 2000. It was completed 1999 to 2000. So rather than wait another 80, 60, 70, 80 years to do that, we're going to be looking at doing some capital projects there for next year, some new windows. Check out the asbestos situation there. Again, they had a new system put in. I think it was mostly remediated there, but we're going to be looking at doing some things down there to, to maintain so we're not in this or somebody else is not in this in 50 years saying, why do we wait so long? So if we can put in some small things and, and make sure it's done. Thank you, and thanks for doing that. And uh, so it was also mentioned that, well, it's obvious Hancock is ready. It's looking mm -hmm. awesome. And, uh, but what do we need at Hancock in order to have the occupancy permit issued? So there's two things that I believe I can check with. There's two things left to do. There's some caulking issues that, you know, had either the caulking around some of the windows had shrunk, and I believe there's some door closures that needed to be audited and put up, so automatic door closures. All right, you know, a, kind of a funny question back to Central. Do we actually have people working there during the week on a daily basis? Like, so, like, like Council Matuski <laughs> alluded to, someday, there's always a project manager there as far as um, the, the company's contractor is there, but to what scope they're doing. Like when I stop by there, I stop by there, I try to stop by every day. There's somebody always seems to be painting there. There's always seems to be an electrician there. Um, the masonry, the, um, the stone was ordered last week or two weeks ago, so I'm guessing that we'll start to see the work on the front happen. Um, but I share your frustration with coming there some days and I see one person there or two people there and, you know, hey, what's going on? Um, they always seem to have an answer of why nothing's going on that day, but it's, it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. I share your frustration with that. Yeah, it's a big contract, so <clears throat> thank you so much and thank you, um, President. Okay, thank any you. further questions? If not, excuse with the customary thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, actually, this was the last one. I didn't know of anything. Yeah, sorry, okay. So the well, let's let's vote on item number 26 first, please. Yep. 26 and 38, to, but 26. Yeah, to the extent that we need to, I don't think we need to, but suspend rule 13. Oh, yes, I, ha I'm, I have a motion to suspend rule 13. I do have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. Fable action. I have fable action, and I do have a second. Uh, roll call. Councilor Adrian. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hamlin. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Marquez. Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Politano. Yes. And President DeFlora. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, you have passed 11 the 11 yeas, 0 nays, you have passed the order. And I'm now on 38. item 38, Councilor Capone. Thank you, Madam President. What I'd like to do is postpone this to our first meeting in March to give the, uh, the chief uh, CFO uh, community development 
whoever needs to be involved with it to get us copies of the environmental impact reports, the then status of the project, uh, anticipated cost to complete the project, and the scope of work to be completed. Okay, so the motion is to item 38 to be postponed to our first, first meeting in, meeting in March. March. And I do have a second. And did the clerk write all everything down that the council is requested? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. You referred. Well, we have Mr. Demas here. Can we spend the rules to take item number 30? The motion to spend the rule to take item number 30. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. The clerk will please read item number 30. Is this under new business, Councillor? Yeah. yeah. Well, yes. if it's under new business, I believe that you have to have the questions in writing for the next time. Yeah, actually, all I was going to ask him is to um, um, ask him to come back for next time to have the answers for me. Okay. That's okay. all so I was going oh, to do. Oh, that's fine. Councillor. That's what I was Okay. And I'm 30, uh, Madam. President, as a resolution of my counselor, Michael K. Marchese, that the CFO appear at the next meeting to discuss if it's financially in the best interest of the city to have trash pickup done in-house instead of by a private company. If I may. Uh, uh, yes. Councilor Marchese. Uh, Ms. Demas, um, I've noticed a lot of things. It, it looks like there's a lot of trash starting to come. I don't know what we're paying to have the trash plus the, uh, what's the, other, the, um, the recycling done. Now, all I want you to ask you if you could put a sheet together and do maybe a uh, uh, something that, uh, that what we're presently paying and also what it costs for the city to maybe buy two trucks and put people on there and, and, and see what the difference would be. I don't know if it's uh, that much of a big savings as it was at one time. You know, that's um, just uh, I don't know if we need two trucks, three trucks. I don't know how that works. I don't know what amount of trucks we have working a. Uh, award say each day. I don't know if there's two trucks there or more. If you could just kind of put something together and just find out what our operating budget is for that right now and find out, give us an estimated budget, what would be if we did it in-house? Absolutely. I'm more than happy to do that for you. Um, what I'm going to tell you, though, would more than likely it would cost us more money because it's really, we're not, the, the significant cost is not the actual hauling and pickup, it's the disposal. Um, and it's really a geopolitical issue. Um, when China actually stopped taking recycling, yep. um, or rather they got much more stringent on the recycling that it, they allowed into their country, it sent recycling costs um, and disposal costs through the roof. Sure. You know, if you, um, I don't know what one of these trucks would cost, if they're half a million or whatever they are. I mean, how long will it take us to kind of, like, you know, be on the plus side of it, you know, after the capital in, initial capital investment, that's all. Understood. Right. I can do that for you. All right. Thank you. Uh, so if we don't have any further questions for Mr. Demas, we excuse with the customary thanks. Thank you. Thank you. You want to refer this to Mr. Demas? To motion to send you motion refers to Mr. Demas uh, for some kind of estimate on uh, what it would cost to do our own trash and what we're presently paying okay. for it and some kind of um, <clears throat> depreciating cost to find out where we'd actually be making money on it for four or five years out. Council, do you want this at your next meeting? Uh, if we, if Mr. Demas is uh, is uh, healthy enough to do it, yes, in two weeks, if we could. If not, it can be in a month. So why don't we do the first week in March? First week in March, be fine. That'd be the first week, week in March. March. To postpone to the first week in, in uh, March. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Madam President, we please, we please revert minutes. back we, to the regular order. We, we do have two pieces on the agenda to. Uh, on the sign-in sheet, and other than that, then we can go back to whatever um, oh, we do. items okay. you like, 27 and 28, if we could take. So if we could at least have a motion to take that, item 27 and, and 28. Yep. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. Clerk, read it on item number 27 and 28. Um, Madam Chairperson, these are, Madam President, these are uh, Committee on Legislative Affairs reports. One is an ordinance, uh, that item 27 is an ordinance for uh, to better document violations that may lead to suspensions and or revocations of licenses and permits issued under the authority of the City Council. And item 28 is an ordinance often offered by Council President Rosa DeForia, an ordinance allowing the City Council to revoke inactive licenses and permits issued under its authority when their supply is limited. Now, these came out of committee. Let me just see. Uh, I believe they came out fairly they right. Together. Both of them, right? I just want to make sure both did. I remembered one did. So items 27 and 28 come yes. out of committee favorable? 
Uh, this is only for enrollment. Uh, if you vote on it tonight, you still have one more chance to vote uh, if you or amend anything. That, but these are very um, small ordinances, if you can see. Um, move for enrollment on item. Accept the report first. And and motion second. Accept, accept the report and place on file. And did you Enroll. fable action? Is that? Yep. Fable and action. I do have a second, enrollment. right? Roll call. This is on item number 27. Correct. <clears throat> on item 27 for enrollment, Councilor Adrian. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hamlin. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. And President DeFlori. Yes. That would be 11 yeas, 0 nays. You have so enrolled the ordinance. 11 yeas, 0 nays. You have so enrolled. Clerk uh, will read. 28 have read. It's just uh, waiting on a motion. Uh, motion for number 28. Councilors. Um, Councilors. Yes, yeah. the, uh, report? the committee report and fable action. Second motion. I have a motion to accept the committee <coughs> report and a fable action. Uh, clerk will read the roll. Councilor Adrian. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanna. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Councilor Paltano? Yes. President DeFlorio? Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays. You have so passed item 28. Okay, um, we can please revert back to the regular Can we ordinance. spend the rules, take item 36? I make a motion to spend the rules and take item number 36. I do have a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Clerk, please read item number 36. Madam President, item 36 is a resolution offered by Councilor Michael K. Marchese that his honor the mayor appear to discuss the use of his campaign funds being directed to criminal attorneys. Councilor Marchese. Now, we don't need the mayor here tonight. My um, objective to present this is to have a meeting on the whole, hopefully in the first Monday of March, to discuss this. I'm sure there's a million questions by this board. But here's a couple of questions that I do have, okay? My colleagues, all of us, we need to know, what are the payments to attorneys for being paid from the mayor's campaign account? Are they for personal issue, not allowed by the law, if this is the case, that he needs to tell us what it is, please. The people need to know. Is he involved in an ongoing FBI investigation? Is he an informant for the FBI? These things we don't know. We see uh, expenditures coming out, and we're not aware of anything that's going on here. Uh, why is he spending so much money for criminal attorney representation? My colleagues, every one of us should know what these criminal attorney payments are for. More than 200000 has been written from his campaign account for legal. What legal? The mayor should tell us. This is why I'm asking the mayor to before a committee of the whole hearing as soon as possible to inform us. If he has nothing to hide or to worry about, we have nothing to hide or about uh, as the city's leaders. Thank you. I think transparency is needed in this situation. Uh, um, we'll do much, much, much else second. Uh, the first Monday. Um, and I, I just think we, there should be questions asked about this. I mean, if it was something that happened for like a year, that's understandable. This thing's been going on five or six years. And I uh, asked I questioned on this in 2015, and the answer I got that nothing was going on, when obviously something was going on. I'm not calling him a criminal. I just like to find out what, what are you spending all this money on? And I think the people have the right to know. I mean, he's the leader of the city. He's the guy we pay. Yeah. You know, he's negotiating contracts. Uh, is it a moral issue? We don't know. So I think it's time to come clean and to present it to us and clean. If it is, I hope it is, I hope it is nothing. But it should be come before us. And my motion here would be to um, have a committed hold for March 2nd, if that's... Do, do you Fine. want to do it as a committee as a whole before the regular a meeting? Committee, a yeah. committee as a whole before the regular meeting on March 9th? Is that the, the March meeting? Is that the That's March, March meeting? Is I'll March second meeting? the motion. Yeah, what, what the first yep. yeah. I'll second yeah. the motion. So it'll be just before the regular yep. meeting. And I like these questions. I'll give a copy. To, uh, copy. If anybody else has any other questions, send them to the committee. Uh, do you have a question? I have some right here written oh, yeah, down. Just like to yes, I am. So this will be to refer to the committee as a whole yep. March 9th, yep. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. All, in, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. You're referring to the committee as a whole on March 9th. Okay, can we revert back to the regular order of business now? I 
and then the interruption. So. Yeah, just one second. No, no, I'm I'm okay. Not a problem. Item number. Item number two, Madam uh, President, is a petition offered by Council President Rosa de Florio that the Everett City Council hereby approves an in-holder license renewal for Envision Hotel at 1834 Revere Beach Parkway. All papers are in order, just in case. Table action, I do have a second. Roll call. Councilor Adrian. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hamlin. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Marquez. Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. <coughs> yes. Councilor Paltano. Yes. And President DeFlorio. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays. You have so passed. 11 yeas, 0 nays. Item number you two. have passed item number two. Item three. <clears throat> is a petition offered by Council President Rosa DeFlorio that the Everett City Council hereby approves a Class II motor vehicle dealer license renewal for a Parkway Cycle at 1865 Revere Beach Parkway. Please Papers of honor. Uh, yes, uh, but before you accept this, please note this is a Class One motor deal and not a Class Two. It's all it, those are new vehicles, so I just want to amend it to make sure it's it's written correctly. So, so the motion will be to uh, amend Class. It's a first class uh, Yes, it's, it's a first class. They, they, they sell new vehicles there. We're going to strike out Class Two and put in Class One. Correct. All in favor? Aye. On the Aye. amendment. Uh, Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. On the amendment. Favorable action as amended. So Second favorable motion. action as amended. Roll call. Councilor Adrian. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hamlin. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Paltano. Yes. And President DeFlorio. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, you have passed as a 11 yeas, 0 nays, you have passed the order. Clerk, please read item number four. Item number four. Is a petition offered by uh, President Rosetta DeFlorio that the Everett City Council hereby approves a Class II motor vehicle zero license renewal for 380 auto find at 380 2nd Street. All papers are in order. Favorable action. Second motion. Favorable action. I do have a second. Roll call. Councilor Adrian. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Paltano. Yes. President DeFlorio. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays. You have so passed the order. Number five is a petition offered by Council President Rosa DeFlorio that the Everett City Council hereby approve <coughs> the awning permit over a public way from Monte Cristo Restaurant at 389-391 Main Street. You should all have the awning um, samples for this one and the next one on your desk. Everything on? Uh, Council DePiro. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just shuffling to find those awning displays. Oh, yeah. To pick which one we like the best. How does this, why do we have two of them? <laughs> Oh, no, the, I think there's two different two, businesses. Two different petitions. Um, oh, Those are two different businesses. businesses, yeah. Correct, yeah. No, no, no. So two one followed companies. the red ordinance no, and the other one. Yeah, uh, on that one and the other one. Did the not. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The sales. I think so. So we're just approving. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're just approving uh, number what's five, what's which is uh, the Monte, Monte Cristo, Cristo on you, Main Mayor. Street, which, which is, is the red ordinance. I mean, the red on them. I'm sorry. Second. D did you have a question, Councillor Martins? Uh, yes. I'm sorry, uh, no Councillor DePiro. Councillor DePiro, are you all set with your question? No, I just need some clarity. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Martins. Do we know if these changes are being proposed by the city or they were initiated by the business? It's usually by the business. <laughs> okay. uh, yes, yeah. I have the paperwork here. They come, they, what they do is they come to my office. I send them to a building to make sure they're allowed to do it. Then they come to me, fill out the application. Um, there's a permit process. I have the permit here. There's bonding or licensure that they have to have. Uh, God forbid anything happens, you know, if it falls. And they fill out the paperwork, just like all of our other licenses. And then it's up to you to approve awesome. it or not. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Thank right. you. It actually welcome. looks nice. Okay. And no further questions. I have, well, do I have fable action? Do second, I have a second? And second. <clears throat> uh, clerk, call the roll. Uh, Councilor Adrian. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Marquez. Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. 
Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. And President DeFloria. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, you have so passed. 11 yeas, 0 nays, you have passed the uh, <laughs> item number 5. Clerk, please read an item number 6. Item 6 is a petition offered by Council President Rosa DeFloria that the Everett City Council hereby approves an awning permit over a public way for La Hacienda Restaurant at 432 Broadway. Councilor uh, McLaughlin. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, uh, through you to our clerk. Uh, uh, Mr. Canelio, mm -hmm. we have a color. I know it's something that we talk about so very often in these chambers. Are there colors that are supposed to be utilized? I know on Main Street we just appro uh, point, approved this one because it was the red that we had all been yes, hoping for. Red so red and black is the... Black. Yes, that's the background colors. Yeah, red and black are the colors, but they, you do give yourself kind of an out that... It, you it's color kind of not, yeah, it's kind of not mandated, mandated, but you... That's what we try to conform yeah, to. It's in, uh, well, I, I think if you read the ordinance, it kind of gives you like a little out. <laughs> because I'm just I wondering. Why, read it. I'm yeah. just wondering why the yellow, the yellow is utilized in the or, uh, the awning if the ordinance states red and black. What yellow? The writing. In the background. The, uh, the, 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 the writing okay. isn't isn't what we yeah. uh, complained yeah. about. I think it was the actual main. Uh, piece of it, right? Then the writing is in whatever color. It's the black or red background. I, that the writing wasn't on the one I remember. Yeah. It, no, was just, just it was just it was just the front of it. Cons Capone, correct? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. A fable action on item number six. I do have a second. Clerk, please call the roll. Was that six up? Yeah, yeah six. six. Okay. Um. Councilor Adrian, Councilor yes. Capone, yes. Councilor Piro, yes. Councilor Hanlon, yes. Councilor Lee, yes. Councilor Marchese, yes. Councilor Martins, yes. Councilor Matuski, yes. Councilor McLaughlin, yes. Councilor Napolitano, yes. and President DeFlorio. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, you have so passed. Item 11 yeas, 0 nays, you have passed. Six. Please, the clerk, please read item number 7. Item 7. <clears throat> uh, is a petition offered by Council President Rosa Florio that the Everett City Council hereby approves an extended hours of operation license for Love Dog Hot Dog Buffet, Inc. at 1865 Rivera Beach Parkway. Um, Councilor is, Capone. Thank you, Madam President. Through you to our clerk. Uh, are we just renewing? Yeah, the, this is the, the same one done? that's happened for okay. the last three or four years yeah. now on the yeah. parkway. Yeah, they've done a nice job. We so. do have yes. some more here that may not understand yeah, yeah, that, no, so if we could please explain it. Yep, yeah. so uh, there's an extended hours operation license for Actually, they work inside the Parkway Cycle parking lot four or five nights a week till between either midnight or two or three, I believe, uh, depending on what night it is. And uh, so anything after 10 or 11 o'clock, depending on the business, we have to approve a special uh, operations hours of license, unless it was grandfathered in prior. So if they're newer businesses like this one, we have to approve it annually. Uh, Councilor Hamlin? Just, just a question to make it clear that these hours of operation are the same hours that are yes. there now. Yes, correct. Okay. Councilor Matuski. Thank you, Madam President. Um, this business, uh, I haven't received any complaints, no. nothing. I mean, here. they were up here, I believe it was what, two and a half years ago. And we had them here for an hour and a half. They do have the right insurance policies. Yeah. There's been no problem. And uh, I still haven't had the chance to visit them yet, but I will. They're open till 4 in the morning? Uh, depending on, I think it's depends three, on the You know, on the week, well, yeah, depending on the events that are happening. Yeah, I think Saturday might be till 4. But Saturday, I think, is the only day that's till 4. Probably. I'm looking yeah, forward to having my hot dog someday over there. I'll get you the license so you can see what else. <laughs> okay, thank you. But, but I just want to let you know, Madam President, it has been never a, a question with this company, uh, not one complaint <laughs> from anybody. If we thank all had you. companies like this, they'd all be open till 4 in the morning. Thank you. I agree with you, Council President. I do have a favorable second. action, and I do have a second clerk. Please call the roll. Councilor Adrian. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Piero. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. President of Florio. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays. You have passed yeas, item. 0 nays. You have passed seven. item number 7. <laughs> clerk, please read item number 9. Item number 9. Uh, Madam President, is an appointment that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Giuseppe Tazzi as a member of the Board of Assessors for a term of two years. Favorable action. Favorable action. Council Capone. Yep, not specifically for this one, but for the other ones going forward, just suspend Rule 20. Not for this one. We'll, we'll suspend Rule 20. So we're going to suspend yeah. Rule 20 for all of them. That's what Rule 20 is. You have to vote for them individual. So yeah. well, it's I better we just go in order. 
They, they're going to come up collectively anyways, Councillor. So okay. I have a motion to suspend Rule 20. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Clerk will call the roll. Oh, I don't have a... Favorable action. Favorable action. I do have a second. Clerk call the roll. Councillor Adrian. Present. So, um, you can't be present, unfortunately. You can leave yes. the room if you don't want to vote. Okay. Yes. That's our rules, Councillor. Thank you. So, Councillor Capone. Yes. Councillor DePiro. Yes. Councillor Hanlon. Yes. Councillor Lee. Yes. Councillor Marchese. Yes. Councillor Martins. Yes. I'm sorry, Councillor. Did yes. you say? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Thank you. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. And President DeFlorio. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays. You have so passed the order. Can you? Item number 10, Madam President, uh, appointment um, by President Rosa DeFlorio's president that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Carmine D. Maria, a member of the DPW Commission for a term of two years beginning February 10th. 2020. Favorite action. Councilor McLaughlin. Uh, I thank Councilor uh, DePero just answered my question, which is that is there an, a law on residency on these appointments? Um, and I think Councilor DePero just answered my question, which is if, as long as you own property in the city, you can be appointed. You could, it was amended that you could either have pro pro own property in the city or you have to live in the city. That was the condition. Okay, and, and not to question it, do we know that anybody that doesn't, uh, that's on this, does own property if they're not a resident of Everett? So I don't want to vote for somebody's appointment if we're not, and I don't know this. And we could have the city, uh, assistant city. Like, I'm sorry, I don't know Phil Master Caller, so I apologize. I don't, I don't know who he is. Okay, so I apologize. Not to uh, invite up uh, assistant city solicitor Keith Slattery. No. Good evening, Councilors. Good evening, I, Madam I, I, President. I, I, Keith I Slattery, Assistant yeah. City Solicitor. If you look at all these, it does look like everybody owns the property in the city, but I don't want to answer can, that question. And I can answer most of them. So I could have the <clears throat> clerk or the uh, Assistant City <clears throat> Solicitor answer those questions. Sorry, I was. Yeah. Uh, that's not important. Yeah. I no, I have Sorry. Councilman McLaughlin ask him the question. I know, I just didn't, he didn't direct it to me, so, so I don't want to interject. So the question is, he wants <laughs> to know all. if everybody on this list lives in the city. How do we know if they live in the city or if they own property in the city? Did, did you want me to answer it, Council? I just don't want to. I didn't know McLaughlin if you were asking me a story on myself. Anybody that can answer it. Okay, so. No one's I, asked any questions. I do. Uh -huh. That's the question. I, who are you asking the question to? So I would like to ask the assistant city solicitor the simple okay. question, which is the ordinance of residency requirement. So as part of the executive function, um, the mayor in his appointments makes sure that uh, the appointees are either residents or own property. And to uh, the best of my knowledge, that's happened. Okay. And I can be more definitive. And then and the clerk has probably And then I'll yield to and ask our city clerk. So as part of the process after the administrative code was amended about a year ago, we'll go a little less, when it changed uh, from giving people not only residency but residency and or property ownership, what the, uh, what the policy was through human resources was to send a letter to every board member, request them to show some type of proof. Now that would be either a... Uh, tax bill if they own the home, uh, pay stub if they get um, you know taxes to, to to their residents, so on and so forth. Some type of proof that gave us either information that they own the home, which is easy we can you know check through the board of assessors also, or um, proof of residency. So um, that, to my knowledge, was done. I did see uh, many of them, though I don't. Uh, it's an administrative function, but because I track these and have been putting them into a system. Um, they informed me of the majority of them, um, and some people even dropped them off at my office, but I would bring them up to HR. Um, so they received, I want to say all, but I know these members here, um, for the majority of them, I know them personally, and that they uh, either live and or own property in the city, except for the only one that I can't tell you for 100% is the new person, but I believe she was just interviewed, so I think she gave a uh, residence. Um, that's the only new person on the board, and I probably can't.
can find that out. But I'm confident she was. Uh, but that's the only one I don't want to say definitively, which would be item number 20. But I, uh, I, you know, just because I just can't remember off the top of my head. Anyone else here? Um, we, I mean, the majority of us know some of these people personally, um, and I serve on some of the boards with these members. So they own property and or live here. Um, that I can say with quite confidence. So, Madam President, the reason I bring this issue up is because there are two appointments here before us this evening that I, that I question. I could be wrong, but I believe that I have questioned on two of the individuals before us whether or not they own property in the city of yeah. Everett or not. So if, the proper if, procedure, um, Council, what would, be the would be to table them. Yeah, and, let, and then send it to me or the administration. Okay. All right. That's fine. No problem. Thank you. You didn't move to table. Okay. Excuse me, because okay. thanks. Unless I'm sorry. Councilman Tucson, do you have questions for the no, solicitor? Well, the question is that uh, a change in policy. Uh, for many years, when that we appointed somebody, their address was actually on the agenda. Now, that has stopped over the last year or two, and that's a guarantee. They had their address, that, you know, so we wouldn't even be at, at this stage of the game if the address was actually on the agenda. And I, I'd like to know where these appointees live, actually, and I know most of them anyway, but... For those that I don't know, this would have eliminated this, this problem that we're having here. And the ones that don't live in Everett, that own property, the clerk can uh, find out what property they own, and, and the, the, you know, that, that issue would be uh, resolved. I mean, I would, def I would definitely, if you're going to send it to me, I, well, all I would do is send it to Human Resources. It is, are you the, uh, Mr. Clerk? It is an administrative function. If so I may, Ms. Madam President, to the clerk, are you the one that gives this to Mr. Mangan, these appointments, or the mayor? The mayor, uh, a lot of times they'll come to me and ask me, especially with new people, if there are openings. So that's, that's yeah, how okay, I'm Okay, so moving forward, moving forward, let's put the address on the agenda like it was done in the past. I don't know why it was dropped. Yeah, a lot of these people are renewals, so maybe that could be. Well, right. it still should be on there, you know, just for those new members and for those who are curious. I mean, I want to know where people live. Right. Everett's three square miles. There's 15 appointees here. Let's, you know what I mean? I mean, it's only fair. It was done. Why was it stopped? I don't know. But anyway, put the address from now on. We can request the mayor to do that. We wouldn't even be at this juncture yet tonight. But if they live out of the city, do you want to know? You want the address of the property they live that they well, own the ones, here? The ones that actually don't live here, the clerk can find out what property they own, and then okay. that's probably a personal issue. Uh, you yeah. know, but they do. As long as you say they own property, is that the requirement? It, it's property own, uh, property business ownership. All right. It's a very simple residence. procedure. Put the address. I don't know why it was stopped. Is it a little extra paperwork? Come on. Okay. Councillor Martin. Then, then what do you think? Thank you, Madam Chair. If I may ask um, the city clerk a question. Sure. Um, so do boards and commissions members recuse themselves when there's a perceived conflict of interest with a license or? Oh, they should. If there's a family member before them. I mean, they, they are given the open meeting law and conflict of interest law every year, like you saw me give you over the last couple of weeks. Every January, everyone signs one. Every other January, everyone takes an exam. Every time you're appointed, you, you fill out the paperwork for the open meeting law. It's a requirement under the law. I mean, I have to give it to you whether you fill it out or not, but I, I mean, I get all of them back or the majority of them back. Okay. So, yes, you have to follow the law. Thank you so much. You're very Thank welcome. you. Okay, excuse, if there are no further questions, so we'll excuse the customary I'm, I'm glad I could be so helpful tonight. <laughs> so, sorry, Mr. Slattery. <laughs> I thought you were more comfortable in that chair. So, Madam President. <laughs> Councillor McLaughlin. I'll, I'll be truthful. I hate to single out any one individual because, uh, because of a question, whether or not it is or not. I hate to. So I wonder if we should uh, table all of these appointments and get an identification of an address of a business or a residence, like Councilor Mitsuski was just saying, that has been done in years past. And then we're not signaling out any one individual and making it look like we're targeting one individual versus another. Because there are two people on the list that I question whether or well, not Well, why don't you just table the two people? We've got 45 but items again, on the agenda. Again, but Councilor. again, then we're signaling out the two individuals. Why not? If you t table 45 items, next week, next agenda is going to have 100 items. Are you willing to stay well, here at 4 o'clock I, I, I am. Quite frankly, I am to make okay. sure that we're doing this properly. And to be honest, maybe it's a learning lesson 
that this won't happen in the future. So if we have to learn from, not a mistake, but if we have to learn because of an issue, then we learn from it and we grow from it as a body, to be quite honest. But I'd hate to signal out individuals whether or not it is factual or not, and then have somebody report in a newspaper that we're signaling out good quality people that have served our city for a long period of time. I don't want to have that become the story and the headlines in the newspaper this week. So the wish of my, body, of my colleagues is to do what they'd like, but I do question too. I have another speaker that hasn't spoken yet. You've already spoken twice, so I will call on Council Napolitano and then we already voted on one. I, I second right, his motion. Let's, 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 I mean, come on. What are we doing here? We're up here to make decisions. We're not here to question every single minutia. If you have doubts or have questions, then hold those that vote up, by all means. But it's not fair to hold up the entire process because you have your doubts about one or two people. Uh, I say uh, we move forward, we end the discussion, we all know what the process is, and if you don't, spend some time off, off meeting and find out what that process is. But don't hold the meeting up indefinitely over minutia. Make a decision. If you question it, hold that individual up. If you know for a fact the person lives in Everett, then why are you holding up the block of appointees? I say we move on. Make your motion. Let's continue the process. Uh, Council Matuska, I have one other council that okay. hasn't spoken Thank yet, you, and I will call on you because you've already spoken. So. Oh, I'm sorry. All yeah. right, so second time around. Council Adrian. So, Madam... Uh, so I brought up this question on Thursday to the solicitor, to Dolores, as well as Kevin <laughs> O'Donnell, and I brought up about the board process. I had my questions. I wanted to see the people's resumes, their letters of interest for reappointment. Uh, so Keith got, Assistant City Solicitor Keith got back to me today. Um, he said that he would be able to give that request to me. Um, I haven't gotten those requests, so I told him I'm not comfortable voting with, on this. I also told the mayor that on Thursday when I spoke with him, I'm not going to vote for any more boards or reappointments or commissions until we get the information in front of us. I still don't have the information in front of us, and so I am not comfortable voting for it. That is why I stepped out of the room. I thank my, our, my colleague, Mike McLaughlin, for raising another question, as well as the residency and the addresses, as well as Mike. Um, Matuski, but I just feel like we're appointing these people two, three years, and we don't have the accurate information in front of us. That's not okay, especially as city councilors. Not okay for me. Thank you, Council Matuski. I just want to clear one. Uh, you know, all I'm saying uh, on these reappointments is, uh, in Councilman Marchese, a longtime councilman, he just confirmed it. It was policy to put the address on the agenda. People are looking at me here like I, I, I'm trying, you know, uh, I'm making this up. I'm not making it up. It was on the agenda, so we wouldn't even be at this juncture if the mayor's office put the address along with these people, okay? That's all I said. Now, I'm going to vote for the ones that I know. If you have a question on two people or one or two people, uh, uh, Madam President, to the the councilman from Ward 6, if he has a question, I, I, I'll give him the courtesy to hold those two over, but these people are all reappointments, most the, of them. Yes, they are. Mr. Tarzi has lived here all his life. I mean, I could go down the list here, and I know most of the people, but it would be very nice if somebody took the time to put the address where the people live. I, I don't get it anymore. It's, uh, you know, you get the bare minimum here on the agenda. So... I'm going to vote for the ones individually. As you said, I told you, I asked you to take them collectively, but you can't do that. So now we're going to pick out the two, one or two, that the councilman from Ward 6 has an issue with. And as a courtesy to him, I'll lay those two over until we can find out whether they own property or they actually live here in Everett. So let's just move forward and uh, vote individually. As you said, Madam President, we can't take them collectively. God forbid. Council okay, Capone. not to belabor the issue, but um, I uh, I know most of the names in this list. And they're all good people, but as a courtesy to a colleague, if the colleague was told that they were going to get information and that's going to hold up my colleague's vote, I'm going to ask that we take 10 to 23 collectively and just 
postpone until our next meeting. On the motion. On Councillor Hanlon. You know, it's funny that we all say that we know these people and everything, but <coughs> to me, it feels like we're insulting them Absolutely. by saying we're going to put this on the calendar until another time. You know, we know these people. There's maybe a few that we don't know. And if somebody objects to anyone that they don't know, I'll vote for it. But I know people on this thing, and I don't want to have a phone call tomorrow and say, John, what's the matter with you? Don't you know who I am? I know who they are, and I know they're good people. And I honestly think we should vote for them. And even if you don't know them, you can take my word for it that they're good people if I tell you that those are the people, people that I know. The other one? Um, and that's all I can say. And I think we should vote for them tonight. Uh, Good. I have Councilor Marquez that hasn't spoken yet. I, I, I'm just going to say, I, I'm, you know, there's, I know most of the people here over 20 years. I mean, I'm going to vote for who I know. You know, so I mean, so I'm not going to make any short and, and insult them because I often have been personal friends for 10, 20 years. So I mean, uh, if you don't know who someone is, you want to pull someone out, you know, you do it. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I just point as many as we can tonight. I don't want to lay them all. So I have a motion to lay it on the table, and I, and I, get a, I got a second on that. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye. The motion has failed. New motion. Do I have another motion? Right now we just have item number five. Well, table. item number uh, ten, 10 right now. That's all. Mm -hmm. Item number ten. Item number ten. This is before you. What's the motion? Thank you. Item number 10 is finished. Councilor DePiero. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Although it is not a conflict to avoid the appearance of one, I am going to step out of the room as this individual is a relative. Thank you. So I have <laughs> favorable action. And it was seconded. And second. Roll call. Councilor Capone. No. Mm -hmm. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor um, Marchese. What? Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councillor Maduski. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. No. Councillor Napolitano. Yes. And Councillor DeFlorio. Yes. 60 A's, two nays. You have so passed uh, item number 10. Six A's, two nays. You have passed item number 10. The clerk will please read item number 11. Item 11. Madam uh, <coughs> President, has an appointment. That the Everett City Council have approves the appointment of Richard Zulo as a member of the DPW Commission for a term of one year beginning February 10th, 2020. Fable, Fable action. action. Fable action. I do have a second roll call for item number 11. Council Capone. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Council Martins. Yes. Council Matusa. <coughs> yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. That would be nine yeas, zero nays. You have so passed. Nine yeas, zero nays. Item right. 11. Item have passed 12. item number 11. Clerk, will please read item number There's an order for appointment offered by Council President uh, Rosa DeFlorio that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of John Barrett as a member of the Housing Authority for a term of three years beginning February 10th, 2020. Favorable action. Second motion. Favorable action on item number 12. I do have a second roll call. Council Capone. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yep. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Matus. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Paltano. Yes. And President of Florio. Yes. That would be nine yeas, zero nays. You have passed item 12. Item 13. Nine yeas, zero nays. You have passed item number 12. Clerk, please read item number 13. Is that the uh, is an appointment offered by the Everett City Council? Uh, excuse me. Is an appointment that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Dominic Polio as a member of the Housing Authority Board for a term of three years, beginning February 10th, 2020. Favorable action. Favorable action, I do have a uh, second, roll call. Council Capone. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Marquez. Yes. Council Martins. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council <coughs> Napolitano. Yes. President DeFlorio. Yes. Nine yeas, zero nays. You have so passed. Nine item yeas, 13. zero nays. You have passed item number 13. Clerk, please read item number item 14. Item 14, appointment, that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Robin Norton as a member of the Housing Authority Board for a term of two years beginning February 10th, 2020. Favorable action? Second motion. Favorable action. Second. Uh, clerk, call the roll. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Pirro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Marquis. Yes. Councilor Martin. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. President DeFlorio, 98 yes. zero nays. 
Nine yeas, zero nays. Uh, you have passed item number 14. Please read, uh, clerk, please read item number 15. Item 15 is appointment that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Brian McCarthy as a member of the Election Commission for a term of three years beginning February 10th, 2020. Fable action. Second clerk, motion. Fable action. Do we have a second, clerk? Please call the vote. Council Capone. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Council Martins. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Nine yeas, zero nays. Nine yeas, zero nays. You have passed uh, order number 15. Clerk, please read item 16. Item 16. <coughs> An appointment of uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Chairperson that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Michael O'Connor as a member of the Planning Board for a term of three years beginning February 10, 2020. Fable action. Fable action. I do have a second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Capone. Number 16. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Council Martins. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. President DeFlorio. Yes. Nine yeas, zero nays. Nine yes. yeas, zero nays. You have passed item number 16. Clerk, please call, uh, read item number 17. Item 17. Is that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of <laughs> Phil Mastricola as a member of the Planning Board for a term of two years beginning February 10th, 2020. Fable action. Fable action. Do I have a second? Clerk, call the roll. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Politano. Yes. Councilor uh, President DeFlorio. Yes. Nine yeas, zero nays. You have so passed. Nine yeas, zero nays. You have passed item number 17. Clerk, please read item number 18. Is an appointment that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Phil Antonelli as a member of the Licensing Commission for a term of three years beginning February 10th, 2020. Fable action. action. Second motion. Second motion. Fable action. Do I have a second? Clerk, call the roll. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Councilor DePiero. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Marquez. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. <coughs> yes. President DeFlorio. Yes. Nine yeas, zero nays. Nine yeas, zero nays. You have uh, passed item number 18. Clerk, please read item number 19. Item number 19, Madam President, is appointment by President Rosa DeFlorio, excuse me, Rosa DeFlorio's president that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of William Hart as a member of the Board of Assessors for a term of three years beginning February 10, 2020. Fair Council Madam President, I make a motion that we table this piece for two, two weeks. The motion is to table item number 19 for two weeks. I do have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye. The clerk is in doubt, uh, so we'll call. we'll call on tabling this for uh, two weeks. That the motion to table this to just table this for two weeks. Two weeks. The we'll chair call. is in doubt. Um, Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor to table this for two weeks. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. No. Councilor Lee. Yes. Council Marchese. No. Council Matuski. No. Council McLaughlin. Yes. <clears throat> Council Napolitano. No. And Council DeFlorio. No. Four yeas, five nays. Has it on the motion? On the motion. I want to make sure it's very clear that I am not against Mr. Hart. I've known him my whole life. He is a personal friend of mine. I questioned a particular, particular on this appointment, and I didn't want to signal him out tonight to make it look like some of my colleagues, including myself, were against his appointment. He has served this city honorably with dedication and commitment for many years. I questioned his residency, not knowing whether or not it was or not, and that's why I asked for it to be laid over for two weeks, but I do not want anybody in this city to think that any one of us are against the, the work that Mr. Hart does on behalf of our city. Thank you. <coughs> Council Capone. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Lee. Yes. Council Marquez. Yes. Council Martins. Um, Council Matuski. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. And President DeFlorio. Yes. Nine yeas, zero nays. You have passed. Nine yeas, zero nays. You have passed item number 19. Clerk, please call, uh, read item number 20. 
Item number 20, Madam President, that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Amy Farrell as a member of the Disability Commission for a term of two years beginning February 10, 2020. Council Capone. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Lee. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. And President DeFlorio. Yes. Nine yeas, zero nays, you have passed. <coughs> Item number 21, Madam President, that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Ian Lalaberti, excuse me, Lalaberti, as a member of the DPW Commission for a term of two years, beginning February 10, 2021. Excuse me, 2020. Second motion. Second. Second. Council Capone. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Lee. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Council Martins. Yes. Council Tuski. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. President DeFlorio. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays, you have passed. Ten yeas, zero nays, you have passed. Item number 21. Clerk, please read item number 22. Item 22, Madam President, is that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Joseph LaMonica Sr. as a member of the DPW Commission for a term of one year beginning February 10, 2020. Favorable action. Favorable action. I do have a second on item. Number uh, 22. 22. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Capone. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Council Martins. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. And President DeFlorio. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays, you have passed. Ten yeas, zero nays, you have passed. Clerk, please read item number 23. Item 23. That, uh, as an appointment that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Joseph, Lam Joseph LaMonica Sr. No, as we a just member. Did that one oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't checked. That's okay. Um, 23 is the uh, appointment that the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Kim Ferrante as a member of the Library Board of Trustees for a term of three years beginning February 10, 2020. Favorable action. Second. Madam, on a, on on the motion. motion, Council McLaughlin. Again, I said originally that there was two members that I had questioned on regarding. It, and this is the second one, and she's a personal dear friend of many of us in this chambers. This is why I didn't want to signal these two individuals out. I question item number 23. I would put a motion that we table this for two weeks and get clarification from our clerk. But I hope that we never find ourselves in this position again where we have to question what we believe to be accurate and not have facts in front of us to be able to persuade one way or another. Thank you. Kim it, she does. I do know that this individual owns property on Swan Street. Right. That's why I knew the other individual owned property on Broadway. So, Councillor uh, McLaughlin. I will uh, respectfully uh, withdraw my motion to the table in two weeks, but I, I really, really cannot stress enough that we need to not have this ever happen again because it's an embarrassment to our body that we're questioning friends of ours. That's right. But it is an honor question that I had on two members. You can always go on Patriot's property and see who owns what. It's right, the computer's right there. Council, Council Martins can do it right now. <laughs> it takes two seconds. Yeah. Some of us have done our homework, Council. Go ahead. If we, if we may as well on this one, why don't we uh, we'll vote favorably on this? And if we could have our clerk uh, submit something in writing to the mayor that any future appointments please have their addresses available. Absolutely. I, I mean, I agree with that. I think the addresses should be here. So, uh, I'll, I'll get the property on. But I don't want anybody to think that we're, we're, vote, we're voting on based on knowing what we know. And I know some people don't, but excuse me, Council Martins. Yep, so not about the members we're voting on, but it's been requested from the committees that we submit questions ahead of time, at least seven days. So it'd be nice if we received the information that we're voting on ahead of time as well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ma Madam Chairwoman, just, yes. just a suggestion. I mean, I, I don't know if we should be putting 30, 40 people's addresses out in public at once. Maybe if the administration could send us a memo with names and addresses that we can all review. 
Um, I, I don't feel comfortable putting people's addresses like that uh, when they're getting appointed out for public display. That's just my two cents. Thank you. That's fair enough. But like I said, Council, we can go to Patriot's property and find out who does own property in the city. And I understand that we should have the addresses, that we want it in writing by uh, the administration that can give it to us in a different memo. So, and, and I counsel nothing, I'm not trying to. No problem, mind. Madam President. I have one question. Somebody issues a lease to us that they are leasing a property. We can't prove that whether or not they're residency if they're not being issued by the administration. because so we don't have a record of their business address or their home address. <coughs> we only have a lease that they've issued to the city. But is it okay to but, have it on a memo, not on the agenda? I agree with Council DePiro. Okay. My, my motion was that I agree with Council DePiro that it should be done in a private email or some sort of informational setting for us as members to hold in-house to just know who we're voting on so that this doesn't happen again. So we can have it as an attachment. Yeah, we'll just, uh, so we'll just request that when the, so like the appointments, when yep. there's a letter, you know, the letter with 25 people, it's their name and address. It's simple enough, and then that will go to you prior. Does that sound good? Yes. So that's okay. what we'll request from the administration. Uh, They're in the audience, and they'll... I'm sure I passed the word, but is everybody, I'll make sure uh, I uh, them. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay. okay. So we have so favorable, we have action, favorable on action on what are we on? Twenty three? Yes, Madam uh, President. Item twenty three and I do have a second clerk, please call the Council Capone. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Lee. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Council Martins. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Uh Council Napolitano. Yes. And President. Uh, to, to Florio. Yes. Ten years, zero nays. Ten years, zero nays. You've passed item number 23. Clerk, please read item number 24. Item 24. Uh, to accept the donation uh, offered by Councilor Rosa De Florio as president that the Everett City Council have accepts a donation of several items from Rapid 7. List of inter inventory is on your desk. Councilor uh, Hanlon. <coughs> I, I just I would like to know what Rapid 7 is. So, uh, I, I, the city's a, the solicitor's here, but I can tell you briefly that this was a company that uh, was bought out in Boston. Uh, they got rid of all their, um, I believe it was in Boston. Okay. Um, they, they, they bought out, they had all this extra furniture, and they were going to put new furniture in, yeah. and they asked and reached out to different people and the mayor said yeah we'll take so free fine. furniture that yeah. uh, can be utilized at no cost to the taxpayer fine thank you so okay. it's very nice furniture high end quality the, we have the Just so you know, but it was all donated there's, there's a list it's all donated yeah. and <laughs> the matters in front of you. I heard about favor I didn't hear a yeah, second so. oh, okay yeah, thank you counselor counselor uh, Adrian yes Councilor Capone yes Councilor the uh, DePiro. Yes. yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Lee. Yes. Councilor yes. Yes. Casey. Yes. Councilor Martins. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Paltano. Yes. President DeFlorio. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays. 11 yeas. Yes. So past, uh, 0 nays. We've accepted the furniture. <laughs> <clears throat> Item 25 is a uh, donation uh, offered by Council President Rosa DeFlorio that the Everett City Council hereby accepts a donation of several computers and computer monitors from Encore. <laughs> Boston Harbor. Favorable action. action. Councillor Adrian. Yes. Councillor Capone. Yes. Councillor DePiro. Yes. Councillor Hillen. Yes. Councillor Lee. Yes. Councillor Marquez. Yes. Councillor Martins. Yes. Councillor Matuski. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Napolitano. Yes. And uh, President of Florida. Yes. 11 yeas, zero nays. 11 yeas, zero nays. You've accepted the nays. Do you want you to note that item 29 is the only piece that is under new business that actually should have been old business. So uh, that is something that we can vote and discuss with uh, not under our new business rules. So item 29 should have been under old business. Yes. Okay. It's the only one that's labeled wrong. So I just want you to note that. Uh, okay. Item postponed two weeks. To it it was has postponed to read. so we can actually discuss it. But if no one's here. Clark read. Oh yeah, that's up to them. Item number 29. Um, item 29. Madam President, is a resolution offered by the entire city council. A request that is honored the mayor to come to the next council meeting to discuss the possibility of purchasing a staffing and community shuttle bus for our seniors so they can enjoy the many activities posted throughout the community, including the monthly senior socials. Yes, council. Madam President, I don't think we have anybody in the audience that uh, will table it for two weeks and in, again invite up the mayor to come and talk to us about this item and hope that he will attend the meeting. Thank you. Second. So the motion is to postpone item number 29 for two weeks. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Clerk will read item number 31. 
Maybe because it was under no business. That's why nobody came here, yeah. It's all right. Excuse me, item 31, Madam President, is a resolution offered by Council Rosa De Florio. It's President that the property manager of 15 and 21 Peter. Staples Ave appear at the next council meeting to address ongoing issues at both properties and that a police log be provided also. Yeah. Council De Florio. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've had numerous complaints on this uh, Staples Ave. Th those are condos that people actually own. So some people own the condos and live there, and some landlords don't live there and rented the condos and just don't care what happens. So i like to get a police report from the police and the fire department of how many times they go there. There's numerous noise in the halls late at night. I want the property manager to come up and explain how, who monitors this, what, what are they doing? Who, who, who do they complain to? And I'd like this to go to community and business development. I, I Just a recommendation, just because um, it's not a business per se, may, maybe government ops would be better just because it's public safety, public service. Do you, do you think CBD? I would send it to community and business development okay. only because this is the management company. That's okay. managing this. That's so the manager. business entity that's running it. Okay. Right. So I'll, I'll like, and obviously I'd like to be invited to that because I want to know what's going on. They, they need, we don't need people like this in the city. That you try to call them, they don't answer your back. So that's why they're on the agenda because in 14 years I don't put stuff like this on the agenda. Mm -hmm. The only time I put things on the agenda is when people don't work with us. When people work with us, I don't need to put stuff on the agenda. I, when the job gets done, I'm happy. The people that call me are happy, and that's all that matters. So, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get through these people, and that's why it's on the agenda. Okay. okay, we have a motion to send this to Government Ops. Please. Second. Second. Is President on the motion? Um, our rules, once it goes, it's been motioned to go to committee. All discussion from the membership state ceases. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Clerk will read the next item. Item 32. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, is a resolution offered by Councilor Wayne A. Matuski that the election department's city slash city clerk office provide stamped envelopes to residents for absentee ballots and census forms. Councilor Matuski. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. You know, um, we all had recently been mailed the absentee, I mean the uh, census forms. And I was uh, talking to a few people and it was mentioned to me that why don't they provide, if we're trying to encourage people, I know that the city clerk had some kind of meeting inviting counselors to attend, but this is my suggestion, okay? And uh, it actually came from somebody else, but I've been thinking about the absentee applications also. Now, I'll tell you uh, a story on the absentee. Uh, it's hard enough to fill out an application for certain parties. Most people that get an absentee, uh, have a disability or uh, older people, you know, 80%, I would say. Now, I had a few people say to me, well, we mailed it back, but it came back. How much is a postage for a absentee stamp? Now, a regular stamp is what, 56 cents? 50 cents. 50. 50 cents? 50, I, think. I have no idea. I think it went up a penny, 51. I, the I think it's uh, forever. But now, <laughs> Mr. President, they received a letter from the clerk's uh, other election office saying that the postage is now 66 cents. For, so, for the absentees? For the absentee ballot. Right, right. So now you've really created a problem. Either you're going to put two 50 cent stamps on. I mean, can't the city. Now, it's, now I, I want to ask my colleagues here. Most people are disabled, as I said, are senior citizens, unable to go to the polls. I think the city should, and I'm going to refer this to the city clerk and the election department, to at least put a, a postage on there and they can mail it back. Not only would the, the person be more likely to mail it back sooner than later, and you know, I've heard the stories, I put it on top of the refrigerator, and this goes for the census report too. Mm -hmm. Now, we're, according to this audit that we received tonight, there's 46,340 people living in Everett. Okay, that's what this audit, Mr. Sullivan's audit tonight came out with. And every person that uh, does a census, we get money from the federal government. I don't know exactly how much, but somebody said it was in the hundreds. 
Approximately 2,300. 2,300 per person? Under the federal census, approximate. Wow. So why wouldn't we provide a postage stamp for these census forms? And I have one question. I think the clerk could answer it, Mr. President. When they, these forms are uh, mailed out, is, do they go by household or is it an individual? In other words... Uh, we do either or. It has a name or head of household. I remember uh, years ago it, like it had the whole family on one... So somebody. Oh yeah, well, there's one name on the thing, but then on the if we know that you all live there, we put them on. All right, so that would only require one stamp. Correct. And if an individual would be one stamp. So, you know, and this gentleman saw me at 7-Eleven the other day. He says, "Geez, Wayne, you know, my next door neighbor uh, lost her census form. She would have mailed it, but she was waiting to get a stamp. Why wouldn't the city? Uh, is it illegal to? No, uh, I mean, if you refer it to to the. Our department, the election committee. Well, I, I'm going to refer these meeting. actually to the mayor because I didn't, $2,300, if we got 1,000 people, that's a pretty good amount of money. Well, uh, 2300 per person? Yeah, th just, you know, those are two different censuses, though. One's the street listing, uh, municipal census, one is the federal census. Federal census is where we receive dollars. Municipal one is, re right. is required on but the But this is an every 10 year deal. The, that's so that this one, is but the that one's year. directly through the federal government. Okay, so I'm going to refer, oh, the federal government. That Does the these printings and so no, forth? No, the ones that you're seeing now are from the uh, director of elections. She, she mails those out. So they're two so different that one forms? We, we can discuss. Yeah, two different forms. You don't work collaboratively? We can't. This question is, I, I know what is. Fed, is the federal, do we have any control for the state? None on the federal one. On the municipal one, we have some control. So when, when do we get the federal one in the March mail? March 12th, it starts online, and I'll be discussing that at a meeting soon. Okay. So that way we can well, even for it. the city census. You know, absolutely. I mean, you know, I think it would be a courtesy, and especially the absentees with, it, with the posters. Somebody got a letter saying it was 66 cents. And as I said, there's a difference between one stamp and two stamp. And people are on, you know, senior citizens want to participate. We're trying to encourage people to vote. Uh, the voting rolls have gone down, you know, as far as people participating. This just makes it easier and less of a hassle. And some people will go out of their way and bring the ballot to City Hall. And then they're really going above and beyond their civic duty, right? So I want to refer this to the city clerk, the election department, and the mayor's office. And I want to thank my colleagues for indulging me in this. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Clerk read item number 33. Item 33. Mr. Chairman, as a resolution offered by Councilors Rosa DeFlorio, Michael McLaughlin, John Hanlon, Jim, Jimmy Trilee, uh, Michael Marque and Michael Marchese, that the Chairman of the Liquor License Commission appear at the next meeting to discuss why businesses in Everett Square can only sell alcohol until 12 a.m. Councilor DeFlorio. Uh, this was brought to my attention that a business is moving from one area that has a two uh, one o'clock license at uh, two o'clock and now they're moving to Everett, and the license is going, anything in Everett Square, the license goes down to, uh, to 12. I think that's very unfair. I, I don't know why they're doing that, and it's everybody that's going to Everett Square. They're not picking and choosing. Every business that's going to Everett Square that has a liquor license, they're gonna roll back to 12 o'clock. So if you're on Main Street and you have a liquor license to two o'clock, now all of a sudden you move from Main Street and you come to Everett Square, your license goes back to 12 o'clock. So I don't know what, what that means, why they're doing this. So I'll, I'd like for uh, the chairman to come and explain the reason behind this. So, um, but I don't know why this has a name and then it says as president. This isn't as president. It's just, yeah, no, no, I know. Okay. So I want that as president strike out. This is me. It has nothing to do with any uh, as president. The system is okay. So thank you. And Council Martins was also a member of the uh, sponsor, so I just I just want to make sure I mention that. Okay. So basically, uh, I I personally would like to postpone this for two weeks and have him come mm -hmm. and explain it over here. I don't think this is going to be a long meeting. Instead of sending it to a committee, I believe that this is. Postponing means we take the issue up at the next meeting. You're inviting them here to answer questions at the next yes. meeting. Yes. Yeah. So I believe postponement would be the would not be the correct motion. 
but inviting them to attend oh, the I'm next sorry. meeting. Excuse me, yes. So the motion would be to invite the uh, license commissioner for our next meeting to come and explain the reason why. Do we have a second? Second. Council McLaughlin. Uh, McLaughlin has the floor next. Thank you, uh, then Council Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I echo the comments of Councilor DeFlerio. I also think that uh, it's unfair to any business to make one business close at midnight and one business close at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. You're now taking a business and hurting them for two hours of operation where another business is is able to stay open for two hours later or, or an hour later or whatever that time frame ends up being. I know that it's a courtesy after 11 p.m. The state law says that liquor licenses are only valid until 11.01 p.m. and then it's a discretionary of the city. But it should be fair for everyone, no matter where they're located in the city of Everett. We should either roll back everybody's hours or keep everybody's hours. But you can't pick and choose where, because they're located, we should have a business open one hour of time versus the other. And then the businesses that are already established in Everett Square, are they all going to be rolled back to midnight or is it going to be just the ones that are moving into Everett Square and then we have a business that stays open until 1 a.m. and a business that stays open until midnight. It needs to be one set of rules across the board for everyone. Whether it's midnight or 1 a.m., that's a discussion to be had, but I believe it's a set of rules that needs to be applied by for everyone. And that's why I think this is an important issue across the city. I don't think it's just Solely Everett Square, I think that needs to be discussed about every liquor license that is held in the city of Everett so that everybody plays by the same set of rules. Thank you. Okay, just gentlemen uh, ladies, just remember that the uh, we are having them come back in two weeks. So, right. again, you want to save your question at that point. Councilman Hanlon. Yeah, my question was that the same as the department heads. Do we have to let them know the questions we're going to ask them or just we spring it on them when they get here? It's a very simple question. Well, well, if, 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 if there's only one question, you know, yeah, but we're if you have some, up here under the context of answering the question about the licensing hours, so there really isn't any deeper information than needed than that. Uh, that should be that should provide well, them. I'd a, like to know what the extent of Everett Square is. How big well, is but, Everett Square? Is but that's but that's a valid. That should be part of their answer. That would what? That should be part of their answer. If that's if if but Everett my, Square that's is my, thing. my question was: yeah. Do we have to ask them questions tonight? No. Or do we ask them questions? Just yes or no, one way or the other. I think when you're I think you're okay with asking them questions that evening, but I do recommend okay. if they if you have a lot yeah, or they're very yeah. my answer in depth, would be that to if you feel so inclined to, to submit, submit you know? if you feel so inclined to submit them questions in advance on an area that you feel they may not be prepared for, forward the questions. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. More is better than none. No, okay. Correct. But you're not required. Yeah. Councilman DePiro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not to belabor <coughs> this because uh, we are going to discuss this again. I concur with the sponsors. Uh, we as a body are trying to transform our city. We're trying to create a vibrant downtown area. We're trying to draw people here. Uh, to do that, you need a nightlife. You don't draw people by shutting down the house at midnight. It's just not how it works. Thank you. So I have a motion before you to... Uh, uh, to, to postpone it for two weeks, weeks? to invite um, yeah. the, the, the chairman anyway. of the board. Is that right? Um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Nice to have it. <laughs> Item 34. Okay. Madam President, is uh, a resolution offered by Councillor Martins and Councillor DeFlorio uh, that, the, that a housing committee is formed to address specific matters pertaining to housing affairs. And no. Councillor McLaughlin. No, it's mine. It's, it's actually my item. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. So the um, initial proposal here, and I actually want to thank Cal uh, President DeFlorio and uh, Council McLaughlin for their immediate support, was to create a housing committee. But we've done some research, and I actually want to thank our clerk of committees um, <clears throat> for looking around to see what the other cities are doing. And... Um, the next step will actually be to work with the administration in this body to produce an ordinance with the goal of creating some type of affordable housing trust fund or an advisory board to discuss the effects of uh, development, displacement, tenant protections. Um, so today we can refer this item back to sponsor as the beginning of something bigger that we can develop um, together from here. Motion. There's a motion to refer back to sponsor. Yeah, yes, with the recommendation that we work together. To yeah. 
like to just speak on the piece, and that is to thank our new colleague, Council Mons, put together this piece um, with something that I think many of us hear every day when we leave our house is that people can't afford to live in our city and they're being pushed out by the rents that are skyrocketing. And we had the mayor here tonight talking about the taxes, and I think this is a bigger issue. And I want to congratulate our colleague, our new colleague, on putting such a uh, uh, piece to forward that is going to truly uh, help the residents of the city of Everton. I look forward to working with her to be able to make the uh, the next step happen and to work with the administration on this issue. But I want to congratulate Council Mons on putting together such a thoughtful piece this evening. Thank you. We have a motion to refer back to sponsor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 35, Mr. Chairman, is a resolution offered by Council President Rosa DeFlorio that a representative from ROCA give a brief presentation on what the organization does for at-risk communities. Uh, they did not appear, so I think you can refer this back to sponsor. Second. 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 They didn't appear. Second. Aye. Item 37. Mr. Chairman, there's a resolution offered by Councillor Stephanie Martins to request that a representative from both the police and fire departments present a comparative analysis public safety report for 2019. Councillor Martins. Thank you. Um, so this was initially actually two items that combined into one, but I've spoken with both um, chiefs from the fire and the police department. So every year, both departments, they actually produce a comprehensive report with the data as far as how many calls each department received the uh, numbers and types of incidents, and uh, it would be great to share this information with the public, especially after the opening of the Encore. So I'd like to invite a representative from the fire and the police departments to share this report at our next public safety committee meeting, um, possibly the first one in April. Back to that motion. Item 39. Mr. Chairman, there's a resolution offered by Councilor Gurley Adrian that the city look into adding bike lanes and better signage on major streets. Yes, yeah, so it was brought to my attention. Uh, one of the Everett teachers, Shane McNally, uh, got hit um, on a bike um, right in front of the Parlin School, um, and he got into a concussion, and he was riding his bike. And so he asked me if I could put this on the agenda tonight. He was wondering if we could add more bike lanes as well as better signage. I do have the list of streets that he was recommending that wasn't put on the agenda, but uh, the streets he was recommending was Broadway, Main Street, Ferry Street, Elm Street, Hancock Street, Bucknam Street, Lynn Street, Fuller Street, Washington Street, Nich Nichols Street, Tallston, Bell Rock, and Second Street. So I have spoken with him on this, and he said if we could put this as a motion to send it to Jay Monty and then have Jay present it to the city council in two weeks. Second. Mr. Monty did put something on your desk also. I know, I did see his comment, okay. um, but it doesn't answer the question. Okay, I just wanna make sure you saw yep, it. Yeah, I saw it. Mr. President, um, I hope that Mr. McNally is okay. I didn't realize that he had been yeah, he's in, a, out. in an accident. That's awful. He's a great yeah. individual. I just want to uh, bring to Council Adrian's attention that Washington Street is a small street between Bradford and Belmont Street. Washington Ave is the street that's off of Fuller Street that runs through uh, Revere and goes into Revere and goes up Elm Street, goes into Chelsea. So she may want to amend that by adding Washington Ave, which is the road that's off of Fuller Street and not Washington Street, which is at the intersection of Bradford and, and Belmont Street. Um, okay. I will make a motion to add Washington Ave and take away Washington Street. <laughs> Councilman McLaughlin, just for clarification, that you're talking about the street that runs along Glenwood Cemetery? <coughs> that's Revere. Correct, but she, Councilor Adrian asked for Washington Street to be added as one of the main roads. And one of the main, yeah. Washington Street is the small street that runs between Bradford and Belmont Street. Washington Ave is the section is in front of Glenwood which is, Cemetery, which is not not part of Everett. Oh, so then she may want to strike. You might Washington want to strike that. Ave totally. I wasn't yeah. sure if we had our section between Fuller and Elm Street Absolutely. if we were in charge of of that section of the street. But it's all Rivera. It's I all Rivera. Yeah. yeah. 
you're all set. Council Adrian, would you like to make that amendment? Yeah, can we, can we oh, actually, actually you didn't. You, you're going to provide the list of streets right. to the to clerk. Yeah. All right, so I would okay. just suggest striking that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, did you have another something else to add? That was it. And this is postponed for two weeks, right? We motion to postpone. For yes, I said a motion for Jay Monty to also inviting him to present it. So it's supposed to this for two weeks, and you invite um, Mr. Monty to appear at that next meeting yes. with information on this. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Clerk will read item number 40. Okay. Item 40. Madam President, there's a resolution offered by Councilor Gurley Agent that the city provide an accurate date of when the updates for the website for the city will be completed. Thank you, Councilor Napolitano. Council Adrian. Yes, yeah, so I have heard for the last two months that the website is going to, the updates are going to come up, they're going to be shown. Um, I'm just making a, a, a suggestion. Um, I would like the mayor's communication office to provide us an update as to when the website updates will actually be completed. Um, I know we sent an invoice and we paid out in December, so I'm just wondering when is the actual website will be completed. Are so you I'm, inviting a, uh, yep, I'm, is it Mr. Ms. Devaney, the communication director, or the mayor? Tom. Tom, Tom Philbin. Philbin? Yep. Okay. So the motion is to invite Tom Philbin yep, and to, to provide our next an, meeting yep. to provide us the information of when uh, the, ups, the website uh, will the be. Website uh, will be completed. Yep. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. <clears throat> Clerk will read item number 41. Item 41. Madam uh, President, is a resolution offered by Council Gurley Adrian that the city review and create rules and guidelines on how board and commission members are appointed and chosen. Yeah, so, at, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. Yep. <laughs> um, as we saw with tonight, um, it seemed like there's a lot of confusion as to what is happening with the process with the boards and the commissions. I did have a meeting with the mayor last Thursday. We did have a conversation about this and he is going to um, look at one of the suggestions I made in reference of number 42. I would like for him and his office to be able to provide a policy or a guideline as to what the process is on a written document and let us know what it is, the whole city council. This will be on item number 41? 41. 41, yeah. Okay. So you... She wants uh, a guide in writing, is that correct? Right. In writing. And you would like that in two weeks? Yes. In two weeks. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Clerk will read item number 42. Item 42, uh, Madam President, is a resolution up by Council Girl Adrian that the city review why individual boards and commissions are paid differently than others. Council Adrian? Yes, yeah, so when I met with the mayor last week, I brought this up as one of my concerns. I said the most diverse boards and commissions are the ones that are not paid. And I feel like that is a problem, um, especially when we're talking about making sure that the city, as diverse as it is, that people are being paid properly. So he noticed that this was a concern. Um, he said that he's going to look into it, but I would also like the mayor's office to come up <laughs> with again with what the recommendations are going to be and how he's going to make that change. So I'm the clerk just uh, oh, informed ahead. me that yeah. this is on the ways and means okay. of a, on agenda for Tuesday night, for next Tuesday night. Okay, is that correct? Well, so Mike, go ahead. I thought when Mike brought this up two weeks ago, his was about increasing their pay. M mine is about making sure that the boards that are not paid, there's boards that are not paid, to make sure that, like, why are they not paid? And to make sure that they are going to, to be paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just want to make sure there's a distinction. It's not about, yeah. Right. It's just a distinction. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So is the motion to refer to ways and means? Yeah. Or would you still, wait a minute. Because I, I spoke with, yeah. I want to make sure your motion. Yeah, is it right. to send it to ways and means 
or to postpone it for two weeks and have them come and explain it up here. I, I want to I have two motions. Right. I want to po postpone it so, and the mayor come up and speak on it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Do I have? Just on the motion, not, not as a slight to the sponsor, but we well, have a lot of these items that we are pushing off to next meetings when a lot of them should be discussed in committee. We have committee structures for a reason. Uh, they're there for a reason. We have committee members for a reason. Um, not every piece should be postponed to a next full council meeting, especially as new business. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I have Council McLaughlin that's been waiting patiently because Council DePierre just automatically spoke without me calling on him. So, Council McLaughlin. I'm sorry, Council <laughs> <laughs> yeah. McLaughlin. It's sorry. It's okay. No, no problem at all. I was just going to offer a friendly suggestion to Council Adrian, which is that my piece in Ways and Means, if she wanted to uh, amend. It, my piece, I believe we could to incorporate this and make it one piece, which is the what I'm looking for, the information that she's looking for is all housed under the same purpose. And to, instead of having multiple pe pieces floating out there, whether or not we could be able to amend it by. I, I think what it is is we certainly don't want to take anything away from the council. I mean, if the council wants anybody to come here, you're all entitled to that. But the way I see it, like I said before, we have 45 items on this agenda. If you postpone every item on this agenda, coming forward for two weeks without going to committee, now you have 45 new items, you're going to end up with 90 items. And I understand people can stay here at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, but I think after 12 o'clock, I guarantee you, I'll be the only one thinking up here. None of, everybody will be sleeping. Everybody will be sleeping. You can't think after a certain time and make the correct decisions. You can't. You can't. So it's up to you. Whatever, you, whatever this board wants to do, it's, I'm all set with it. But I, I just wanted to bring that as a point. So, Councilor Adrian, I have, a, I have a motion on the table to postpone for two weeks for the mayor to come up. I do not have a second. Second the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Clerk will read item number four. Right, right. Item number 43, Madam President, is a resolution offered by Councilor Gurley Adrian that the city review rotary traffic and see what recommendations can be made. There is a note on your desk for that also, yes, Councilor. Yes, so I will, I will work with Jay on this piece. Uh, so I will take this off the agenda and work with Jay Monty on this one. So the, vote, the motion sponsor. will be to refer item number 43 back to sponsor? On the motion. Yes, Councilor Napolitano. Yeah, I would just like to uh, invite the council to join us Thursday night because it's, it is important to review the tra rotary traffic, but that's exactly what we're doing Thursday night at Public at Government Ops. Uh, we have a sincere, we have a, a severe problem at uh, Santilli Circle. Um, both both Santilli Circle and Suites of Circle are both actually state roads, which means the city is limited to what it can do. Uh, but we're bringing all the uh, people together uh, regarding a, a serious issue at Centilly Circle, and that's a major rotary. So I would uh, I would invite you to join us uh, Thursday night at six o'clock. So the motion would did you say uh, councilor to refer back to sponsors? Is that correct? Yeah. I have a second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Item forty-four. Madam uh, President is a. Resolution offered by Council Gurley Adrian that the city review ordinances that may have a trial period. Uh, so during our legislative affairs meeting, it was brought up that the snow ordinance uh, only has a trial period, and I still haven't gotten anything from David Flood about a period after the trial period. So right now, our snow ordinance is outdated, and so it just brought up to me as a concern what other ordinance could be outdated. And I just want to make sure that we have a process that reviews yeah. this. And if we do, you know, what's happening because this was found. Yeah, so uh, this is the only one after going through was re when we reviewed and hit trial period. Yeah, that was the only one. Uh, besides that, the trial period, if you read it at the bottom, it doesn't mean that everything else was null and void. The only thing that's missing is the fine structure. 
but you still are required, but there's no fine structure, which is an issue, absolutely. Uh, this, I think, was passed back in 2014. So, um, yeah. It's almost six years. Yeah. So, right. So that's the only one that we found that still had a trial period uh, caveat there. So it just needs to be uh, amended so we can add a fine structure like that was already there. Just get rid of the word trial period and recreate the, the structure. So you can do that in legislative affairs if you'd like to do. It's already in there. Oh, oh, so that's part of your pieces that you might have done a few uh, weeks ago? Oh, okay. So then you could refer this one back because you already have it in committee. So all in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. And final item, number 45 is a, uh, ma excuse me, Madam President, is a resolution offered by Councilor Gurley Adrian to request the mayor's office to provide and create an organiz organizational chart and promotion how employees are measured. Councilor Adrian. Yes, so I sat with Lara and Dolores, and there is no known known organizational chart and I think this would be helpful especially when we're looking at the budget and we're looking at the pieces of how these employees are structured um, that we should have an organization chart every organization that I know of has a chart has where the employees are what's their title and we do not have that so I'm just requesting that the mayor's I'm making a motion that the mayor's office review this and hopefully present it in about two months Two months. No, they do have, or, yeah, other cities definitely do. Somerville, Cambridge, Boston, they all do. So, Council McLaughlin. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, this is um, a concern for me because when we had an organizational assessment department, I requested specific information along these lines. And we were told that we couldn't have any information because it wasn't privy to our duties as a city council and that we weren't going to be given the right to ask these questions. Because when we had a department head here and a secretary and a whole department created for organizational assessment, it was like the best kept secret in Everett. It was like, it was like, it was literally, it was like secret service to be able to break through the wall, to be able to get any information whatsoever out of that department. You had a better chance of seeing snow in July. So to be able to, I wish the sponsor well on this piece, to be quite honest. If she gets it, better her than me, because I fought for quite a long time up here to ask for it when we had a whole department, and I was told that it was not our place to have this information. So, again, I'd like to see if this comes to fruition, what changed in the administration's mindset on how they're going to treat and respect the city councils up here. So you're requesting information in two months? All those motion on item number 25 is to request the information. She's given them two months. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Um, before, before, before we do. Before we adjourn, uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, just tomorrow morning, uh, obviously, Councillor Larry Bruno um, sadly passed away. And as you know, it's, a, it's something that I do in my, um, out of my office as we hold and honor God at the funeral so tomorrow morning at 10:45, if you have if you can make it in front of the uh, immaculate conception church i'll be out there and we'll we'll lead the, her body in and out of the um the church so it's just something that we uh, we always do as a uh, former colleague so if anybody can make it i i please employ you to make it and i'll be there thank you <laughs>